Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Keep. Um, all of us Woo! here invite you to join our adventure today. And we hope that these few hours, uh, we can help provide you with a spot of sunshine during your day or a distraction from the chaos of the world around us. Um, thank you for joining us on this journey. Uh, before we get into the game, do we have any announcements? Um, we're missing a Wesley today. We are missing a West today. He will be back next There's week. He person. is out at an event. Not an event, but a thing. An event works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, but it implies more um, people than are actually there, I think. Um, on other news, we're getting close to 100 followers on the Instagram. We're at 74, 75, which is very exciting. Um, so keep spreading the word, keep sharing it. We are, yay, having a presence. Uh, anything else? No, I think that's it. All right. Um, then real quick, before Everybody? we begin... Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. Dear sweet merciful Dean Deity, please don't kill <laughs> my characters today. No, no promises, but on okay. that note, a few a few questions came up last session I'm going to address real quick. Um, Doran, in your ah. enlarged state um, with your giant smite feature, um, we, I looked into uh, using an action or movement or free action, whatever, to pick up or transport one of your allies. Uh, um, so if the creature is conscious, grapple rules generally apply, uh, and it takes an action to grapple a creature, to grab them and move them in whatever way. It gets a little bit trickier if they're unconscious or dead, but I will pull, still probably require an action to move them in combat. Um, as far as carrying them, using the same grapple rules, um, when you move carrying a grappled creature with you, your speed is halved unless the creature is two or more sizes smaller than you. So even though you're large, uh, you still will have to um, have your movement speed halved to transport a medium-sized creature. If you're trying to move a smaller or tiny creature, then you're good to go. I don't um, remember what I was trying to do off the top of my head. I but think you were moving yeah. Val at that point, or yes. trying to. You think somebody out of the... Yeah, cloud. someone who was Sleepy Time Junction and was dragging the butt out of the poop. I think that was me, and I think I was unconscious. Yeah. I believe you were unconscious. Um, so it just means you were grappling a creature that couldn't resist the grapple, but you would still mm. have been moving at half speed. So sure. moving forward, we'll go ahead and we'll do that. Um, okay. Speaking of Halberd, um, the, I looked a little bit Eric. more at the sneak attack rules. And mm -hmm. one of the things I noted, I did not have marked on my cheat sheet very well. You should um, be dead. No, actually, I took hit points away that I probably shouldn't have, because sneak attack doesn't kick in when there's disadvantage on the roll. So when he was prone, the uh, crossbow bolt that hit him shouldn't have taken sneak attack damage from that. Oh, well. Um, so that was my bad. Sorry. We will keep that in mind for moving forward. Um... On that, let, yeah, on that yes. note, mm -hmm. on that note, on that note, let's go ahead and jump into this. We'll uh, we'll lower the bridge and raise the gate because it is time to enter the keep. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, when last we left our heroes, the eleventh hour had arrived in Whitebrand in search of a journal they suspect to be in the hands of the Underlord, a figure they suspect is a beholder who lairs a short distance away from the city. They split up, searching for information on the Underlord and the Brotherhood also. They visit the library, managing to gain access to the restricted section through a variety of shenanigans, uh, where Kesator discovers some information about his long-lost sister with the aid of a magical, semi-sentient book. On their way through the city streets, the group is attacked out of the blue by a group of assassins, uh, mysteriously masked and disguised, the 11th hour emerges victorious, but with more questions than answers, and we'll go ahead and we will pick up from that point today. So, Kesator is speaking with one of the guards, though three more, including the one charmed by Val, are nearby. Val and Doran are with Nightbane in an alley just a short distance up the road. 
Sonyx and Halberd have started moving towards the mouth of that alley, intending to leave to reinforce Kezator. Why? You are in the process of haggling at a shop a short distance away. <laughs> uh, in the streets, there are still civilians that are cowering and hiding. There are some that are unconscious in the road. And the assassins' bodies have are still uh, following where you left them. You hear more guards incoming, armor jangling and boots stomping. Two other guards are starting to gather the people and bring them into a queue for questioning, trying just to get a sense of what is happening here. It is loud, it is noisy, there is chaos, and the guard is just starting to get a handle on things and starting to establish order. So, what are y'all doing? Um, I'll start off. Uh, as I look back on... About to head out, how does my group of companions look? How uh, shaken are they? Do things seem in control, or are there persons or personnel that um, might require attention? Real fast before I step out. I will go ahead if and I'm let them answer that. So, Doran and I are um, basically stuck in the alley with a giant tentacle panther. Yeah. Yes, and it is a very tight fit for this tentacle panther. There could be nothing wrong with this. Uh, is Doran, are you still large, or are you, you back to dwarf size? It lasts a minute, right? Yeah, it would have been, if it's not over by now... It, it's it, over it, by now. Yeah, so I'm... It, it would have diminished by this point. So, I think Doran went first, right? Do what? Through the alley? I didn't, I can't hear you. You went first to the alley, Doran? I guess I went first. I don't know. I believe that's correct. Sure. Because <laughs> we were going to We'll go with it. Doran the kitty. Sure. Sure, I went first. Yeah, I'd say it's safe to say Val's looking pretty freaked out at the moment. All right. Um, Sarix is up and moving, and he's got his wits about him. Doran, how's Doran looking? Physically, I'm not terrible. Uh, I'm not happy that we just got attacked for no reason, apparently. Oh, I guess I should mention that Val looks like he's barely on his feet. Um, all right, I'm I, going to... I guess I should do that. Walk up to um, Val and oh, yeah. before I head out, I'm going to look at him. Let me pull up my, my sheet real fast. I'm going to put my hand on him and do put my hand on his shoulder. Are you alright there, friend? And do um, second level cure wounds. I go ahead and roll for that. And you take... 13 points of health. Um, and then I will look around at some of the chaos that ensued outside. And I know Kesator's out there, right? And he looks Kesator's like me. Kesator's out there. He Last time I saw like you. Kesator looks uh, like at me. At this point, you I'm are. I'm going to start motioning back and I'll, I'll put my arm around Val's shoulder and we'll start the back of the alley, keeping out of sight. Okay. There are a number of guards as you were scanning the street. Uh, there are another probably about half dozen guards that are starting to make their way in that are still a little bit distant but are starting to help establish the order. They're starting to pull people um, to, to question, and it looks like they're gathering them in a group. Um, um, so pulling people up off of the street and out of the alleys so you don't have long to just hang out here. Yes, I also, at the very end, didn't I... Uh cast last week, um, Pass Without Trace. I believe you did. Cool. What are you hiding behind? <laughs> uh, I thought we were in the shadows of an alley, because you said night is coming, and so it's getting darker, everyone's out the on the street. The sun is going down, it's, it's relatively dimly lit, and but we're this is behind still an alley uh, between houses. Exactly, and we're behind a house. And You're next to was, a house. You're between two of the houses. Yes, a three-story and a two-story, right? Mm -hmm. With the sun going down. What I'm saying is, right now, 
nobody can see you. But if someone comes mm -hmm. into the alley, mm -hmm. you're not going to easily hide just standing in the alley. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's what I was trying to say is it's shadowy, right? It's not, not like blatant, I'm hiding behind a wall, I'm not out of sight, I'm just in like quiet as possible. And we're moving out of the alley back around the houses. Okay. So right. are y'all moving around? Are y'all leaving Kazator and heading deeper into the alley? I oh, know Kazator can handle himself. Um, Val is messed up. Very much so. And so I'm going to take care of my person who looks a little bit more in darkness right now compared to the one I'm pretty sure could handle himself and has some slick talking. Okay. Um, um, real as quick we're making our me, way... Hmm? Val, uh, real quick, as y'all, if y'all are starting to go deeper into the alley, into the darkness, into this tight and closed space, go ahead and make me a wisdom check. Be wise, my friend. Uh, wisdom saving throw, I'll wisdom. say. Okay, much better. Uh, crap, 23. crap 23? Oh, yes, that's... Oh, normally my crap throw. Not crap throw, crap I can't do math. Uh, 23, you um, said? Yes. Alright, uh, your breathing does start to speed up, your anxiety is starting to rise, but you manage to keep control of yourself. You take a few deep breaths as you start heading a little deeper into the alley. You feel the presence of um, your friends around you. Before we lose sight of... By the power of friendship. Is it over? Um, no telepathic bond on him. Is this something you have to see? Uh, yeah, that's at? what I said before, before we lose sight of Kesator. Okay, you're going to have to push past people to get to the front of the alley to see him. Once you're in the alley at all, he's too far down the street for y'all to see. He's down there, and we're way over there. Okay, okay, I see it. I'm really glad we left this map up. Um, you're the laziness. Right. Um, I'll I'll slide past Halberd real quick. Just give me one moment. Uh, get to where I can just peek around and see Casey Tor. Um, and then I'll telepathic bond. And okay. I'll uh, I'll just say one of the gods is your friend. We're going after the edge. I'll shoot you a message once I know where we're going. Um, and then do I see the guard I charmed? Yes. Awesome. Uh, uh, you also to... see another half dozen guards that are probably 20 to 30 seconds away from your location, just pulling people into a group in the street and starting yeah. to uh, question and, and figure out what's going on. All right, I'm waving the team to go, and I'm just going to really quickly set telepathic bond to the guard I charmed and say, his name is Kesatora, he's your friend, help him. And then I'm going with the group. <laughs> oh, wait, he still looks like Halberd, right? Too late. He does look like Halberd, <laughs> yes. All right, I, I forgot about that part. Then I would say Halberd. Mm. <laughs> I'll let, well, we it. I'll let you work on it. Um, it's been a week, all right? It's been a week. Why are you dropping names right And what a week. I know. It's not any better. <laughs> uh, at this point, uh, in the, the in back the heart... and grabbing him by his mm -hmm. scruff of his neck. Uh, as you're starting to pull him back deeper into the alley, you turn and you see one of the halflings that had been reinforcing you earlier has a finger to his mouth and gestures for you to follow him. Do I trust him? Mm, do you trust do we, him? Do we have a choice? <laughs> I'll trust him right now. <laughs> okay. Um, if y'all are going to attempt to quietly follow him, I want everybody in the alley to go ahead and make a stealth check. Yay, disadvantage! <laughs> plus ten. Man. Oh, plus ten? Hey, plus ten. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 18. Um, Nightbane has an 18, how about you got a 25? Val? 33. There you go. And Silyx? Oh. Massive, Please. heavily armored, shiny dragonborn, attempting to sneak through the alley. 22. <laughs> nice! So, Halbert, apparently you've been giving your allies some tips uh, because they're, they're actually fairly quiet as you're heading deeper into the alley. And we will go ahead, as y'all follow this halfling, we'll pause there. Kezator, you are in the street. Sorry, bud. You are being uh, not under arrest, but stopped and questioned by this human guard. Uh, ruddy skin, dark hair, shorn, very short. Mm -hmm. um, he has sort of pulled you aside, and I. So, so tell me what was going on here. My my companions and I were walking down the street, and uh, all of a sudden there was an arrow that came from nowhere, and and men appeared on the roofs, and we we began to defend ourselves. I am very distinctly not using an Australian accent. All right. I'm so not. you were involved in this altercation, then? In the manner of speaking, yes. Yes. He, he starts uh, pulling out a, a small slate and taking notes. Um, are there two there, or one guard speaking to me right now? There's one speaking to you right now. Uh, there are three more that are working nearby. Okay. Um... And from Val's message, I know that he's my friend, whatever that means. Uh, the one you are speaking to is not the one who is your uh, friend. Okay. But I don't know that, so I probably assume it is. Yeah, probably. That's a fair, fair assumption. Because he said oh, something about the guard is your friend, and there's one guard speaking to me, so I'm assuming he's my friend. Okay, all right. All right. So, um... good. I... <laughs> Give me, give me a little bit more information. So you said it was one of your friends that was targeted by this attack. Yes, yes, one of my companions that I was, was traveling with. Go on. I, I'm not sure what you'd like to know. We, we, like I said, we were walking and suddenly there was an arrow and, and, and an ambush. I don't know, uh, my, my friends and I have not been in this city long. I don't know what they could have been after. Uh, it was uh, quite the shock to all of us, and uh, there are plenty of witnesses around if you'd like to speak to anyone, and I see that your, your, your friends are doing that as we speak. I uh, will get, the, we'll get the picture. Your story, though. The, uh, did you see what direction it came from? Create the scene for me, if you will. Um, well, we were walking this direction, I'll point uh, yeah, <clears throat> through uh, the walkway, and the arrow came at his back, I believe, from, from that rooftop, and I'll point. Uh, and then men popped up at rooftops uh, all around these buildings. All right. Uh, your friend's name, what was that? Uh, it was... Plimpy. Plimpy. <laughs> Plimpy, yes, yes, my, my good friend Plimpy. Uh-huh. And, uh... <laughs> Your good friend, uh, Plimpy, has he, has he been in the city long? You said all of you are new, or is this just a... I might as well have just said fart. <laughs> what, what's your business here in the town? Right. Um, well, uh, we are here just, uh, traveling, enjoying the, uh, discovering of new cultures. Right. And, uh, where is Plimpy now? Uh, well, It was I... a grievous attack. We've got healers that are on their way. Where, where Indeed, did he... Indeed, uh, he was obviously frightened, and he and my, my, my third friend, it was the three of us, uh, and, uh, he threw an arm around his shoulder, and they, they, they took off down an alley. I'm not certain where they are. Right. Your third friend. What's their name? 
Klimpy. Her brothers. With a K. Right. With a K. Um, at this point, do go ahead and make a deception check. The K is silent. The K is silent, it's just Limpy. <laughs> okay. That is an unfortunate name. <laughs> There's a spell for that. that that's Soliax? <laughs> He's not here uh, to spend himself. Fourteen. Fourteen. You're adopted, brother. Right. As, as you're talking, there is a... sort of a no-nonsense attitude that sort of takes over his face. He's still writing exactly what you're saying. So, um... You said it came from up there, and your friend fell here. Where's the, uh... your third friend? Did did they go together? What was going on I with said, that? Yes, the the friend who was wounded put an arm around... Uh, Plimpy put an arm around Klimpy's shoulder, and Klimpy was helping him to safety. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and the, um... The foe here that has, uh, fallen. Do, do explain that to us. You chose, you chose to stay and fight rather than assisting your friends? Oh, indeed, as, as Klimpy was helping him to safety, I thought that it would, uh, if we all ran, we would just be pursued. So I stayed here and I'll, I'll motion to my crossbow without, you know, going for it. Say, I stayed here to uh, hold off the attack while they could run and then I could pursue, but then... Uh, you and your uh, wonderful town's guard showed up as our salvation, and here we are. Right. Do you have your license available? No. What license would that be? To travel armed in the city. Really? Law bearers, clerics, those of high enough station. Ah, we, we have a trust and an understanding, but you're a stranger to this town. Walking Good. armed through the city. I will pull out... Um, hold on, I'm checking components real quick. Uh, I will pull out um, my journeyman's certificate but cast Minor Illusion to change the name on it to Grimpy. <laughs> I'm trying not to be the third brother. Um, to to um, Rundy Shoehorn. Rundy Shoehorn. This is going to get bad. It's fine. Right. It's fine. <laughs> I see you are a student of the arcane arts. Indeed. Right. This is my arcane crossbow. So... You better. You have not registered any weapon with any of the officials of the city. You haven't seen the lawmaster. You are you an affiliate with the mercenary guild to carry an enchanted weapon through the city. Oh my god, this is stupid. <laughs> We're not part of the fantasy NRA. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many laws here. Um, Welcome to New York. It would seem I have come into the city rather underinformed. Apparently. You thought your master would have prepared you better. Who is your master? And he gestures to look at the paper again. Oh, certainly. I'll go for it. I'm dimension dooring out of there. <laughs> okay. I was right. trying to save Halbert's face, but it's just not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, you go ahead. And that's just a somatic com or a vo verbal component, right? It's not somatic, I don't believe. Uh, that is correct. Just vocal. <laughs> okay. So... As you sort of summon this dimensional gateway behind you, this uh, arcane energy, and step through it, you see he looks up from the slate that he's writing on. He says, "Don't wait, just the," and then you're gone. So where are you I'm actually going, going? 
five hundred feet in the like whatever direction the alley went, like perpendicular to the street. I'm just gonna go five hundred feet that way, drop disguise self, and casually start walking to the Temple of Ayun because I assume that's where the best place. I, my my best bet of where we're meeting up. Okay, so we will go ahead and meet back up with you later. Um, Rai. <laughs> Yeah, hey, hey, hey. I just imagine that I accidentally dimension doored like right into rice shop. <laughs> um, where is That'd my map? Oh, okay. oh, she's taking a seat. Yeah, that's good. Oh, let it be true. Actually, oh, darling. Please let it be true. Over here. If it's not true, that way. It's true. That would be so great. Ooh. No, not right into the shop, but the Temple of Ayun tends to be pretty well supplied with a number of uh, fine inks and papers and various um, accoutrements. So the, the, the shop that Rai is in, not that either of you really know this, not terribly far. Um, so you are purchasing some of the inks and papers. Mm. Um, and you're specifically interested in this speedy ink. You know that the uh, the regular ink of the quality that you need for your arcane uses for your spell book is uh, fairly... Um, they, they had started with slightly overcharging you for it, or attempting to, and you are knowledgeable enough to know that... Excuse me. Um... 100 gold is in fact a very fair price and you are not going to pay the 125 that they're asking for it. The ink that you are also having your eye on that will help you transcribe spells in a shorter time frame is a bit more expensive. They started asking 300 gold for it and you've got them talked down to 225 at the moment. My goodness, darling, we must pay you very well here. Enough to make a decent living. Can I roll insight on that? Uh, sure, go ahead. No, that's great. That's not great. Yeah, it's a 12. Um, with the haggling that y'all have been doing, it's been fairly straight-faced. You get the sense that she, the, this human woman manning the counter, is very good at what she does, and fairly no-nonsense, and has already given you a fair deal, or at least uh, as fair as it's going to get. Well, darling, uh, it seems rather sad to come into such a fine shop and just buy a little bit of ink. So uh, I was also thinking about possibly getting a small sheaf of paper. If you have some interesting journals, I would be interested in that as well. And I do see the Paducah and Opal writing set up there. Those are very interesting too. Uh, so what do you think if we maybe included a few more items? How much further could we bring this down? Uh, to be fair, miss, the more items you include, the more the price is going to go up. Yes, darling, but that's how some math works. Other math actually looks at the items going down a little bit individually. This is, darling, I'm trying to help you here with the sale. Miss, what exactly are you interested in? And I will cut you as far a price as I may. Uh, a small thing of your regular ink, a small thing of your speedy ink, a small sheet of paper, uh, I would love to look at the journals, and then, like I said, that Paducah and Opal writing set has caught my eye. <sighs> There's a deep sigh that sort of comes over her face. Um, the Paducah and Opal set, as you are interested in, is 450 gold pieces. Mm, okay. With the inks, the paper, I can, I suppose, bring everything to a total of 700 for you. A hundred savings. Make it rain! Is this I acceptable do. to you? 
I do find that actually you, my dear, are just an amazing haggler. And if they are not paying you well, they should pay you more because you are the first person who's actually managed to make me actually think that I will pay the price you're offering me. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so let's go ahead and go with that. And then, like I said, if you have any interesting journals, I would be interested in that as well. Um, we have a number of bound pages that are suitable for journals, if you suppose. We don't have anything... Uh, are you looking for something pre-written on a particular subject, a, a treatise or some sort of traveler's journal, traveler's log, or perhaps um, a, a blank journal to record your own information within? I kind of these fancy journals where you, uh, you have one and your partner has the other and you can write notes back and forth to each other. Oh... Journals of Telescription, yes. Yes, that's what they're called. Thank you, darling. Oh, you're quite welcome. Um, we do, in fact, have one set. Now, they're small. They're pocket-sized. The number of pages is fairly limited, but that's the only one that we have in stock right now. Um, if you're interested, it's 80 pages in each journal, and it is instant communication. Unfortunately, once the page has been written on, it does lose its magic, Interesting, darling. Very interesting. And how much would those be? Um, those are going to be... Let me put up, pull up the um, inventory here real quick. Give me a nickel for your pickle. Dear Darla. Dear Diary. <laughs> I really um, your first name. I hate your stinking guts. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this is not The internet's a little slow right now You might think I had something that was uh, Taking some bandwidth going on Oh, darling, Ooh, take your time Fantasy bandwidth So patient with me thus far I do appreciate it, darling uh, These particular journals are going to be An additional 500 gold pieces and about right now, Hybrid has gone down the second time. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, now that no, no, we already established all of that. That was while she was actually perusing the merchandise. I'm sorry, I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> um, Are you sarcastic? Right now we're just coming for our lives. Now. So it's, that's 500 with the, um, in context with the other 700 gold worth of items I'm purchasing? Indeed, so that will be a total of 1,200 gold pieces, and unfortunately I cannot go lower on the generals themselves. And I roll one more insight check to see if she's telling the truth. Yeah, go for it. Give it a shot. Oh, nice. Oh no, that's even worse. That's an eight. Uh, she seems to be telling the truth in this case. She's, she's fairly straight-faced, not giving much of an inch. You know, darling, for you, I think I think I can do 1,200. And uh, with that, I will tell you, I noticed you have some fabulous negotiating skills. There is a uh, seller down the street selling some clothing. It's absolutely wonderful. She's underrated. And I do believe that if she got the right person to help her get into uh, some of the noble houses, you could make a good amount of cash there better than you're doing here. So here's the 1,200. And then I'm also looking for this tavern, if you could possibly direct me to that as well. Certainly. The tavern's name was... Um... Tempest something. Tempest Shadow. Tempest Shadow. Oh, indeed. And she goes ahead and she um, wraps up your gifts and, and uh, purchases, I should say, and uh, guides you to the door and is explaining and giving you directions. And motioning, oh yes, just up the street. You'll want to go northeast here. Uh, follow this main route, and uh, you'll pass through most of the temple district in this area. And then she's describing the landmarks that you'll take for the turn. And uh, the Tempest Shadow is a, a large in lots of very classical music. It's uh, about this time of evening. It should be just starting to hit its heyday. Uh, you won't be able to miss it. Absolutely fabulous, darling. Like I said, you have been an absolute dream to work with. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Do you come again? Yes, indeed. Thank you. My pleasure. Yeah. I and... love some reactions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, so she uh, has given you the directions and escorted you to the door, and um, you start making your way out. I'm just going to head to the Tempest Shadow. All right. The gentleman following the halfling, um, he leads you through a number of the alleys and the side streets. And at one point, he leads you into a building, uh, down into a cellar, and through a uh, trap door into a very well-dug-out, well-lit uh, cavern uh, that is uh, currently empty, but has sort of been designed to, to hold a fair number of people. It's well-lit. Uh, the air down here is cooler and smells faintly moist and guides you to a small uh, tunnel-like passageway. It says, this will get us across the main street. We'll be able to come back up and travel through some of the side passes and alleys and get somewhere a little bit safer to talk. Is there a way we can make ourselves get close to... Um, where were we headed? We were going to temples or to... Well, we were following a little halfling person. Yeah, I know, but before before oh, well, we, we got shot in the bar. back. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. That would be the Tempest Shadow. Is there any way we can get close to the Tempest Shadow? We can get you close, but... Well. What, what is your name first, my friend? My name is pulling that up. Uh, my name is Torek. Torek. Why not ask me to um, go for pulling that up? Mm -hmm. And you see, uh, at this point, he starts uh, shedding some of his layers. He pulls off the cape that had sort of been disguising his form. Uh, you see, he only has um, he has one whole arm, and then from his elbow down on his other arm, his left arm is missing. Um, he says, "I we can get you there, but... Who we, was that, Torek? We're not quite sure yet. Eska may have more information. Uh, we would really like to speak to your group in general. We've heard you've been making... Well, you've been asking questions about the Underlord, and we would wonder if perhaps you could do us a favor. Paid, of course. Of course. Uh, um, well, we need to gather up our crew before we could even consider and make sure that we're safe, but, I mean, I'm, I'm always ears for an audience with whoever we may, and especially for someone who's stepped in to help us out. I appreciate it. Um, but right now we need to, we really need to get my crew safe, uh, if you understand what I mean. Indeed I do. And if you'll let us do what we do best, we can go and collect your crew for you. Just please, follow me. And I just want to make sure he's got, as I, I look him over, he's got like the tattoo of the edge as well. Um, or is this... He does. Um, on his right arm. Uh, just above his elbow. And then, can you help me remember, please, just because I'm a little bit fuzzy. Um, Eska, would I recognize that name? Uh, no. This is not a name you've encountered before. All right. I'm going to look around at the Doran and Salix and um, Val and just see if they're all right with it. And Nightbane, who is fairly <laughs> unpleased at being in such a small space. It is... This is amazing. Nightbane be, uh, is sort of... You know, you know how cats have their ears sort of laid back and their tails tucked close to their bodies when they're unhappy? <laughs> Imagine the tail is tucked, the tentacles are laid flat, the ears are low, and he's just sort of prowling and fairly unhappy at being in such tight quarters. I'm just going to walk over and just start um, patting him. It's all right. It's all right. This is uncomfortably good training right now, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> His eyes Same thing for you. I mean, look, look at this one. And I'm going <laughs> to put my hand on Val's shoulder, who I'm sure is not doing as well. You two have a bond, my friend, Nightbane. It, it's... 
The Neither tension is palpable. Val has managed okay so far, especially in this sort of cellar cavern, uh, where it's well lit and he's with the people he knows. As the air does start to warm up, the longer you'll spend in here, and he starts feeling the claustrophobia a little bit stronger, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Alright. Um, I really don't like the way you said that. <laughs> oh, totally. You don't read into it too much. I'm gonna totally go Jean Grey Phoenix on us. Uh, I, totally. It would be best if we get out of here sooner than later. Um, my friend Torg, so... Um, lead on. Very well. This way. And he gestures to head through the tunnel. Um, it is a fairly short tunnel. Uh, five feet tall. Uh, about eight feet wide. Um, so Torek has no problem, and Doran has no problem. Um, like being at home. You have to sort of hunch over a little bit, and Nightbane sort of crouches down and does like a little arm as he's moving forward. Um, it... Val. <laughs> All right. I'm going to put you in front of Nightbane, so you have to go. Because <laughs> that could be nothing but bad, right? <laughs> no. So just out of curiosity, is this a secret tunnel? Secret tunnel! <laughs> um, oh. It does not seem to be very well traveled. It is fairly well disguised. You had to go through a trap door to get in here. The trap door had been covered by a rug, and it does not seem to be uh, necessarily widely advertised. I don't know how close that translates to secret in your head. I'll let yeah. you establish that. <laughs> Enough to sing the song. Enough for the song. Um, at this point, Rai, you do notice a familiar figure on the street ahead of you. A short ways ahead of you. Um, Halberd. No, excuse me, not Halberd. Quesator looks like himself now. Quesator <laughs> is walking a little ways ahead in approximately the same direction you are. Although he does look slightly more lost than you do. Um, I will walk a little bit faster and loop my arms and be like, hello, darling. What are you doing up here? I'll look back. Ah, Miss Rye Excellence. How wonderful to see you. Um, Isn't it always? Huh? Isn't it always? Hmm. I'm going to go for a short stroll, and I will catch you up on the last ten minutes, really. And... Accompany me to the Temple of Ayun. Oh, of course, darling. That sounds wonderful. I mean, I was just there, but... Well, let's go back. <laughs> I have some information I need to seek, and I need to inform you of what just happened in your absence. No, oh, of course, of course. And, and, darling, the temple's actually that way. Alter. <laughs> uh, just without it, just wordlessly, yep, yeah, like I, and just, as we were coming back, where were we headed when we got ambushed? Weren't we headed to the Temple of Ayun? Or were we headed, we were to, headed to the Tempest Shadow. We are headed to the Tempest Shadow. And that was, is that where Halbert had talked to the guy about the Beholder, or, or about the Underlord? No, that is where you have heard there is a oh, the performer bar. who occasionally frequents the Tempest yeah. Shadow. Okay. Um, shoot. Okay. Um, I'll just he keep going. I'm going to drop by the temple. Do I know where that is in relation? Or do we know where that is, period? Because we haven't been there yet, have we? You have not been there yet. We've only been um, you know, it is in the northeast part of the old quarter, close to where it meets the heights. Okay. It's uh, cool. sort of the the slumming version of a rich person's. Like it's not in their district of town. It's it's still very nice. It's still very well to do, um, but it's not okay. it's not in the heights. So obviously it's it's their version of slumming. Right, okay. Cool. Um, I can't find the map right now, so. Um, as we're walking, I'll just head to the temple so I can get more clarification maybe on where it is. We'll ask there and just catch Rye up on 
Um, essentially, we were walking down the street, headed to the Tempest Shadow, and Halberd took a crossbow bolt to the back. Um, there were men on rooftops, we were ambushed. Uh, the rest of the group fled while guards approached me. I spoke to them briefly and then clapped out because it wasn't going well. Oh, that sounds terrible. So, so why are we heading to the Temple of Ayub now? What are we looking for there? I need some information on, some, some clarity perhaps, on the information I found at the library. Uh -huh. I hope ah. that they can Answered. possibly give me a few quick answers before on our way to the Tempest Shadow. Of course. Well, I'm glad to hear nobody got hurt. It is an unfortunate situation. Indeed. And rather curious oh, and concerning that they seemed to know <laughs> who he or who Halbert was and have it out for him. <laughs> well, darling, from the short time I've had with you, it does seem like he makes those kind of friends, so... Yes, but traveling with him for several months now, that's the first time that has happened. That should be the thing that shocks you, my dear. Well, perhaps so, but it means that we should be wary, at least while we're in the city. Um, yeah, but yes, since we're close that. to the temple, shall we swing by? Alright, so you all go ahead and... You, you spend a little bit of time, but it's going to take you about 10-15 minutes to walk to the temple from where you're currently at. Okay. Um, uh, by about this point, right about the time y'all are arriving at the temple, those of y'all underground, including Soliex in his massive clanky armor trying to get his seven-foot self into a five-foot tunnel, <laughs> um, y'all are led through another series of passages. Um, you head up back onto street level for a little while, um, and then into a... this whole time, y'all have been moving... Uh, northwest, and you head into an uh, obviously more tightly packed, where the buildings are smaller and taller, if that makes sense. Um, so there are more levels, and they're packed closer together, and there is a, um, a less opulent presentation. You feel, you see that the buildings are in slightly worse repair, that there are some that are still under construction, but that people are obviously still living in. Um, the streets are much less even, and there's a much stronger scent of human humanoid presence as y'all go through this part of the city. Um, it's not overpoweringly unpleasant at this point, but it's it's... These streets are not as well kept, and there's more uh, refuse on the city streets, um, the sides of the streets, as y'all are traveling through this. And you get a few more ways, or, or a few more minutes into this section of the city before Torek sort of ducks um, off the main road and west into a, um, a, a darkly lit... Uh, sort of first floor building, and as you enter this room, you um, see it fast. is... Hmm? Real fast, as we're going, does his body language or persona change at all? As in, like, he might be getting nervous or something's coming up that he's aware of that we might be aware of that would be tipping any type of hand to say, I don't like this situation and I'm uncomfortable with how he's acting. Um, make an insight check. Yay! Modify 20. Okay, yeah. No, uh, the opposite, in fact. Especially as y'all are getting into this uh, more lower-income section of the city, he starts to relax. This is a, a... Even though it's more crowded, even though it's dirtier and darker and um, less... Uh, um, easy to traverse. There's a comfort to him here. There's a um, sort of a confidence in his movements as he's guiding you, and there's a, a relaxing in his shoulders and a loosening in, in his gait as he's starting to lead you through his turf, essentially, his, what he's more comfortable with. All right. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Um, so as he leads you into this building, um, it's a a grocery of sorts, um, fairly basic goods. There's not a wide selection of herbs and spices. It's fairly um, basic uh, produce, vegetable matter. Uh, he waves at the shopkeeper, who nods back and leads you uh, around a corner and down a set of stairs into another basement area and then heads over to a crate, leans against it, and knocks. Uh, there's a pause, a brief moment, and then the crate moves away from the wall on the other side. You can see it had been covering a, a gap in the wall, and it leads through into a courtyard, uh, that this sort of area between buildings that has been uh, repurposed and sort of furbished to make an outdoor courtyard. Uh, it is dimly lit. There are lanterns and torches around. There are soft harp music being played over about 20 feet away, a set of gnome siblings, it looks like. Um, brothers who are reclining on some of these cushions. There are a number of people, probably 12 or 15 people that you can see just in this area as you sort of duck through this gap and out to the outside. Um, and Halberd, you in particular notice all of these people share a marking somewhere on their arms or their chest or over their collarbone. Um, they have a mark of the edge. <gasps> Yeah. Uh, Torque just was able to come through. Nightbane does not quite fit through the hole. Hmm. Uh, Torque sort of looks at you. Your kitty can wait here, or I can take him around, give him a little bit of a space, a warehouse just up the way. I don't mind waiting with Nightbane. Might be prepared. What might be best is I'm not a fan of leaving my companion alone. I'm giving a chance to rest up and tend to my wounds. In form case at all where we're at. Um, he'll stay with Nightbane and I'll come with you. As you will. Uh, um, this way then. Or if you come with me. Here. Dawn? Right. Okay. Does it fit? It'll be a tight fit. Are Thanks you wanting to stick bit. out here or are you wanting to come with us? Hmm? You wanting to stay here or are you wanting to come with us? I'm gonna go with you. Sounds good, Nightbane. Go ahead and guard. Guard a friend. Alright. So... Now I'll find a corner it is a, a corner. Uh, it's it's fairly strongly scented, but you do manage to, to settle yourself down. Nightbrain uh, lays down, facing away from you. His tail is twitching, and he's got his head uh, prepared, easily ready to move to pounce as it is called for. Um, Can I take this time to take a short rest? Uh, we'll see how long this takes, but you can certainly start one. Okay. Um, Halberd, you mm -hmm. and Doran and Soliax head through this little gap in the wall into this courtyard, um, following Torek, and Torek fairly quickly, uh, waves down a, this half-orc female, it looks familiar to you, um, she had come with Torek earlier, he's like, I, I found him. Uh, she makes her way over to you, says, thank you for your, uh, following Torek, we, I don't know if he mentioned, we do have a, an offer for you, shall we say. Uh, please, do be seated. Can I get you anything to drink? I'll do an Elvish bow, a salute, and are you Eska then? Aye, Eska's my name. 
Very good. You may call me Halberd. Um, Pleasure to meet you, Halberd. Shh. How's... I don't have Soliex's sheet in front of me. Um, how's my crew looking, uh, health-wise? Doran? 41 of 69. You might have anything to, um... Help take the edge off the, the recent wounds from the scrap. I mean, I could spend my second wind, I guess. No, I'm asking Eska that. Well, uh, we have food and drink, and a place to rest, if you will. Food and drink would be most welcome, but we don't want to impose. We're yes. just resting to be out of there alive. I, I understand. Uh, it's not surprising. There's been the uh, price put on your head, especially you, and two gestures over to Siliax. 3,000 gold for yours. Is that put on by the Brotherhood? Well, that's what we suspect. And that's been unconfirmed so far, and she pulls out a piece of paper, and she hands it to you. And on this piece of paper is a description of a group of individuals. It starts describing an elven archer, male, middle-aged, dark hair, seen in the company of a displacer beast, a <laughs> dragonborn style. knight, male, young adult, brass with an emblazoned shield, arbiter, a human arcanist, male, middle-aged, musician, and then there's a potential connection to Grimhold Hawk Bandit with a question mark next to it. How? <laughs> <laughs> A human devotee of the Moonweaver, young male, white armor, a dwarven smith, adult male, enchanted hammer, strange runes, with a question mark next to that. And then below that, 2,000 gold pieces on acceptance, 8,000 on proof of death. And then in a different hand, a different, someone else has written below, uh, the alabaster ruin wants the arbiter alive, further 3,000 gold if brought subdued to the complex. Could you could you repeat that name one more time for those of us taking notes? Uh, which which name? The Alabaster Ruin. The Alabaster yeah, Ruin. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, and can you read that last part again? Uh, the Alabaster Ruin wants the Arbiter alive. Further three thousand gold if brought subdued to the complex. Oh, then this is fun. We, uh, our sources brought this to our attention shortly after dawn this morning. We've been following you and trying to provide some sort of guard. Unfortunately, the, uh, we cannot be everywhere. Our sources are not limitless. And, well, it's better to do business now and perhaps have you on your way out of the city where you are better able to protect yourselves. That is... Very much appreciated. Um, are we in a safe place, would you say, right now? Do I need yes. to be aware of? This is as safe a place as we know. Very good. I'll take comfort in that, at least. Um, and I also noted, just curious, um, I wouldn't be saying this, but as I read through the names, Rye was not on that list. Uh, Rye was not on that list. I don't know if that's good or if I want to fix that. <laughs> I mean, it's always good to be loved wherever you go. Um, I guess making waves somewhere has done something right. The Alabaster Ruin, though. I'm not familiar with that one. Nor are we. Someone powerful and wealthy, obviously. Um, the complex that they mentioned is perhaps what makes us think this may be some act of the Brotherhood, but very rarely are they so overt. This is... <laughs> Violence is not their... their modus operandi, shall we say. We did kind of piss them off a wee bit, didn't we? I mean... No well, I cannot we fault your taste in enemies. Else. But uh, I would say that my experience with them has been... Um, Violence is fairly fitting, as well as kidnapping and the like, so no love lost there. 
if it is them but i'm not sure this is this is all news to me and it just came out here because i i see that they're mentioning um was it grimhold as well uh there's a brief mention on it i believe yes <laughs> some well, arcanist may have a connection to something in grimhold i think there's probably just rumors at best but um i don't know I don't know if anyone in our party is enough to be sort of hot bandit. <laughs> <laughs> Make a deception check for me. How well are you lying about I don't know that? if that's a lie or not. <laughs> <laughs> because I wasn't technically there for him to be the hot bandit, and he didn't do it well because he got caught. I so did it very well. I rolled like three nat twenties <laughs> on that escapade. <laughs> Make, make a general charisma check there. <laughs> general charisma, right. <laughs> I'm <at> 19. <laughs> oh, good job. So you're, you're obviously not I'm sure being... whether you're presenting the truth or not, but you're not uh, Sarcasm you're doing whatever you're loaded. doing to the best of your ability. That's fairly oh. well done. She sort of brushes it off. I'll smile. Unimportant. Um, at the moment. Yeah, exactly. Just just people. Um, how how connected and how how many of there are you in this edge group here in um, how edgy are White you? Brand? Yeah, sorry, my my names and places. Uh, I don't have my map. It's it was stolen from me. They will get a copy back to you. <laughs> um, those of us you see here are. Uh, just under half our number. The others are out still scouting for you and your party. Uh, it's his luck that Torek found you when we did. Luck and skill. Well, you're not wrong. Torek sort of bashfully rubs the back of his head and I do my best. Well, you do it well. Still, uh, I offer him a fist bump. Go short, people. He knocks his fist against yours. The, if I may be so bold, Please. Well, we that. have provided some assistance for you and would be quite grateful if you would provide some assistance for us. That's what I was under the impression of. I'm curious as to what, and I also will be very forthright with you as well. Um, I cannot speak entirely on behalf of my party without first consulting everyone in them. And right now we've been scattered, so I would love to hear and do what I can. Um, but just know I will need to speak with them first. But please let me know what we can do to help and what, what is going on. As you will. You have been asking questions of the Underlord and his power in the city and the reach that he has. And many of my people are under his sway in one form or another. Edge. No, uh, she oh, sort of uh, gestures at her face. My people. I understand. The half-orcs here in the city. Um, you must understand, there is little workforce here in the city of mm -hmm. any value. Trying to make ends meet to provide for our families is exceptionally difficult. Having the edge here has been a great boon for us. Those of us who've been able to purchase our freedom or out of our indenturehood and, and make our way here. But the Underlord still holds power over many of us, many of my, my people, my family. What we want is for you to remove him. We have gold. We we can offer you loot from from his uh, uh, hoard once his collection once your task is complete. Anything you wish to take from his lair is yours. We just I am tired of my people living under his power, under his sway. The reputation it brings us in the city, the lack of work we can find, the lack of respect. The Edge has provided more for us than he ever has. If I can show my people, if you can remove him, if you can, if you can kill him, you would be saving my people. 
I love that no one else is really here except for myself and Dorian. This is so great. Soliax is here. Soliax is, is here. Soliax is here. In <laughs> my <laughs> mind. Soliax in spirit. Is elsewhere. <laughs> his, his body is here. His mind is diverted. He's busy thinking about how <laughs> Thank you for Soliax right now. <laughs> He's too busy thinking about that right now. Love you, Wes. <laughs> He's thinking about Sarai. We have, <laughs> no, he's not. We have collected 3,500 gold pieces. I know it's not much, not nearly enough, but with the, the loot, the treasure you may find from his collection or his lair, we... This is all we have. Can you think about the Underlord? Because we have guesses, but I would like to figure it out right now, yeah. and I figure out of everyone, you and your so people are probably... Because of your connection to your people who are in service to him, you would be able to give me more information about who he is exactly. So, who is this fantastic underlord? Or was he? Um, yeah. Well, the underlord is an arcane abomination. Disfigured horribly, a giant floating tentacled eyeball. He is paranoid and powerful. His his magic manifests in the form of various shooting lights, uh, rays of energy of some kind that have various effects on those who cross him. And if so you do not please him, if you fail, uh, some of you he will kill outright, some he turns to stone for his garden. Mm -hmm. I know a, a lion, I think you could take care of stone statues, but I don't know about death. I'd rather make a stone statue than become one. That's fair, and you definitely have the skill to do that, my friend. Um, now, well, I, I will forever speak highly of my crew, but I will also be honest about us. We just had ourselves handed to us as we tried to get a leg up in a fight against a whole bunch of assassins who um, apparently are answering a call for a price on our head. And you're telling me that this is a fantastic arcane abomination that is powerful and paranoid, which doesn't help us at all. Um, though I understand being paranoid right now, I slightly am myself. How exactly do you see that fight going down, if you're going to be completely honest with us, um, based on previous experiences, how can I allow my crew to step into something, and would you say, what would you give our likelihood of actually coming back out of that? Well, I'm sure speaking to the saviors of Stillwater, you'd be able to come up with a plan for yourself. You've saved the entire city from flattery is nice, and I, I certainly appreciate force. it, but it's not it's not the same right now. Like, please allow me a moment of paranoia. I almost I, I did go down several times, and um, we all almost did. Like, help me out. I understand. Yeah, we're heroes, and we've we've done that right now. But um, I'm still we're all still nursing wounds at this moment. So, Certainly yes, take absolutely. Time, heal, recover. By all means, but... Do you have anything, then, that could aid us in this process if you're wanting to send us on right now what I think might be a suicide mission for at least one or two of us, minimum? What, what type would you be able to aid? Because I appreciate the gold, but I know that you'd need that for potentially helping your own people. My first and foremost is I, would, I want to help, but I have my people to take care of, too. Is there something that you could aid us in information, weapons, or something like that, or skills, or I don't know, but I'm just trying to get all the cards on the table right now. I'm not trying to be rude, I'm not trying to be offensive, I'm just trying to be honest. It's Make a persuasion left. check. I will take that. Not so much that we're opposed to the idea. 18? We'd like to live past the fight. My mojo. Certainly, I do. I do understand your hesitation. It is truly a fearsome foe. I, I understand. 
the the information, of course, we can get you as much as we can. His lair, unfortunately, is complex and difficult to traverse. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps you may you can use the same sort of tactics that were used against you: ambush, stealth, deception, perhaps. As it works so well on your party, perhaps it may work on him. Um, yes, all of us are good at those things. <clears throat> I mean, all of us are good at at least one of those things, just no one is really good at all of them together. Um, based off what, what she's saying, do I get the sense that she is being honest, or is she just kind of shooting in the dark right now? Does she? Do I get the feeling like she actually knows what she's talking about, or is she just... I'm like, hey, let's throw this out here and make it look good. And yeah. Make an insight check. Yay! 24. 24. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. yeah. Gonna get good. Cute. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, as, you're, as you're sort of taking a moment to look her over, um, her body language is earnest her eyes are very focused on you you get the sense that she is hopeful uh but also sort of she understands this is a big ask but you get the chance that you're kind of her her best hope at this moment Mm -hmm. that the resources that they've expended trying to find you and protect you and save you is Uh leading up to this so that she could have asked you this. We're your only option. Not really, though. I... As you said, you, you cannot make a decision now. Please talk no. it over with the rest of your group. Take time. Rest. Recover from today's wounds. Tork could go with you, send him to us when, or bring you back to us when your party has made a decision. Whatever the decision, I will give it to you myself. I think you deserve the integrity of that. Um, that is, that is a very steep ask. I know you care deeply for your people and I respect that and I understand what it is to have them, your people in service of a tyrant. I will need to talk to my crew, as you've said, and we will need to see, is there any other type of aid? And I, I do not be, mean to be disingenuous with this, but any type of aid that we were to go into this fight on your behalf that you would actually be able to offer? Because I, I just need to take a stock of what we're getting into, if I'm going to be honest with my crew. What sort of aid would you need? What sort of things would potentially kill this thing easier? Well, I don't know. You're obviously well equipped. Your weapons, and she glances over at Doran's still sparking hammer, are obviously enchanted. Magic weapons are... There's always a little bit of static electricity sparking off of it. That's part of the enchantment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I, was, I was more me going like, I don't think all of us have magic stuff yet, do we? Some of our stuff is magic. <laughs> oh, I think, Weird. correct no, me I think if I'm wrong, uh, I think so every single person has at least has one it, magical item. Did he get a weapon? Oh, we? okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I, can, I don't mind being wrong. I'm good at it. Uh, Ian can be wrong. Anyway, uh, but Torrance mm-hmm. is just the most overtly magical, uh, which is why she just used awesome. his in this loud. example. Boston. Awesome. The loudest obvious example is what it is. Except for a hand crossbow that blows up every time you shoot it. Well, I thought, yeah, no, I thought of that. Delph! Not literally loud. Visually no, I know. loud. Yeah. Let me talk with my crew, and if you can... Give us a little bit of time. I think it would be best for us to get out of this location sooner rather than later, but we're still needing to gather some information because we aren't going to go in blind. And I hope you can understand that. 
Certainly. Whatever information, if you have questions that we can maybe answer for you, just let us know. You will be able to be in touch. Um, and we will be able to be in touch as well, especially if Torque is around and we're able to be in contact. I just don't want to risk exposing the edge. They've been formidable and very gracious allies. And hopefully we have been able to be somewhat of a help against some brotherhood trash as well. Um, but, Truth hurts. I mean, every town has their garbage. As I said, I can find no fault in your enemies. Let me talk with my crew, and I will let you know what we're able to decide and what they think is wisest. As you will. Uh, please, feel free to partake of the food and drink here available. She gestures to um, one of the halfling women nearby, and she brings a couple of plates and, and platters of food and some flagons of ale over for you. And uh, if you would like, at this point, you can go ahead and take your short rest, and we will jump over to Kezator and Rye. Mm. So the two of y'all are heading to the Temple of Vayu, right. is that right? Yep. Y'all are arriving there right about the time that uh, the other group of guys uh, arrived at the, uh, uh, the little building with the crate and the bolt hole. Um, so you head on in to the Temple of Ayun, and um, the elven priestess that you had seen before, Kezator, um, with her, her golden skin and sandy brown hair, in her maroon tunic and robes, um, she is currently in the courtyard outside uh, enjoying the shade under one of the uh, awnings. Um, she she has a about a half dozen um, young pupils around her, and she seems to be telling the story of one of the uh, uh, historical mosaics, um, guiding the the students through the history around it. Um, the telling the story of the great hero Zelisar and his band of mighty heroes as they fought and uh, protected people in the shattering and um, you can you get the sense especially as a storyteller yourself this is a small part of a grander epic tale connected to the uh, history of this world uh, but she is at the tail end of it figure fixing to just wrap up and release the students into the evening for the day. Um, within a couple of moments, she is finished, and um, she she nods at you as she's in the process of dismissing her students. This is High Priestess Lanith. This is Lanith. Yes. yes. Okay. okay. Um. As she nods at me and the, the, the kids begin to walk away, I'll approach her and just, uh, what time is it? Um, it is probably between eight and nine. Um, no, it's not quite that late. Never mind. It's because it was about six when y'all started fighting. We'll say it's between six thirty and seven at this point. Okay. So the sun's starting to go down, but it's not super dark yet. Okay. So I'll just approach to say, good evening, High Priestess Lennon. Might I trouble you for a moment of your time? A moment, certainly. What may I do for you? Uh, I first just wanted to thank you for your assistance in uh, getting access to the library. Um, I found uh, the information there most helpful, um, and I very much appreciate your assistance in signing my library card. My writ, writ of what was I'm it? Writ of access to be of assistance. I wanted to ask you, something I was reading there uh, mentioned a place that I was not familiar with, and I was wondering if you might possibly have heard uh, of a place called Vondera. Vondera? Well, that is a name I have not heard in some centuries. Uh, if the stories are correct, Vondera is a world like unto, but separate from our own. 
Indeed. Can I history Are check you... that name? Oh uh, yeah, go for it. I guess I should have. Is there, since she's mentioning it, knowing it, is there a connection to Ayun? With from that that place, I don't know if it's a city or what it is, but. Uh, Volgera. Yeah. Um, in your learning, it is not a name you have come across before. Okay. okay. Uh, Rai, what was your role? Oh, I'm so upset right now. Um, it, it vaguely rings a bell. You think perhaps sometime in the library there might have been a mission, not that you went on, but that Steady maybe had okay. some sort of experience there, but it's, it's hard to tell for sure. It's just, you can't quite place it. Okay. Um, it is interesting. Are you familiar with the existence of other worlds beyond lore? There are some few legends and tales of those who travel between the planes that mention other worlds similar to our own here. Uh, usually some mishap or some fey trick bringing them from one plane, perhaps an elemental plane, to a world not their own. And the difficulty in finding a way home. There's quite an epic ballad about it. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the, um, oh, what was the name again? Oh, the Lay of Kolya? The Lay of, can you spell that? Kolya, K-O-L-I-A-H. Yeah. Uh, am I familiar with that? Uh, make a history no. check. Do I get to do that too? Uh, why not go, go for it, right? This dice. Oh, come on. That's better. 17. Uh, I think that's an 8. Oh, it's a 10. Ooh. 10. Uh, Kesator, this is not one that you're familiar with. Okay. Um, Rai, you know that um, while the name itself, Kolya, doesn't ring any bells, the sort of process that she's describing of accidentally trying to get from the material plane to one of the elementals or to the Shadowfell or Feywild, some other plane of existence, um, and then back again, there can be these sort of hiccups that'll take travelers to another parallel sort of world rather than to or from their own. Um, these, these sort of uh, pathways, these strange um, bumps in the road, we'll call them, are what these sanctums are designed to stabilize. Um, the more a sanctum has a stronger tie to a world, the less likely an accidental traveling is going to get to or from that place. No, I cannot say that I'm familiar with uh, the Lay of Kolya. Well, I'm sure we have it written down here. I can send a, send a page to uh, find it for you if you wish. Uh, that would be that would be excellent. I, I would love to read it. Is it connected in some way with the Knowing Mistress? It is a legend we have recorded. It is not specifically connected to her power, uh, apart from the fact that all knowledge is in fact her domain. Certainly. The studying of such a remarkably strange tale, the story, if nothing else, is well worth remarking upon. Excellent. And is there anything else you might recommend, uh, a piece of writing or uh, e even someone I could seek out for, for verbal law that anywhere else you have heard of uh, Bandera or was it uh, merely from this, this single tale? She sort of her, her eyes fade a little bit and she's sort of scanning her memory and trying to, to recollect anything um, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, at the moment, that seems to be all that I'm calling directly to mind, although 
If I do remember anything, I will send it along with the lay. Excellent. Um, one last question, if I might. Is there a, a store of learning here that is separate from the the library in the city uh, that I might uh, do research in? Uh, while we do maintain our own archives here, I'm afraid that they are reserved specifically for those of her, well, most devoted followers. Those who have received her blessing and some form, some form of power from her. It's mostly instructional, you understand. Of course. Um... I already know she she because she's the one who mentioned the the Veritas folio, right? Yes. Okay. Did she say anything about? Oh, she 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 said something about we were we've been waiting for the one whom it was intended for, or something like that. The one for whom it was meant. Yeah. Which I have to think wasn't. little bit of case towards inner monologue here he's very confused because the the letter in the front was from Selator veritas which is his father which he thinks is responsible for hiding her and therefore would not be wanting me the one they were hiding her from to be accessing this book so i, I either have to think it wasn't meant for me or it wasn't written by a friend of the family or not not some somebody on quote unquote mine and my sister's side rather than her side so I, I don't that's confusing me and i say that because i don't know if i should mention having a folio because i'm not sure if it was actually intended for me to have um okay i will just after she says, you know, that, that uh, all that about only them having access to it. Um, of course, I understand the uh, learning of the knowing mistress. There are certainly aspects that are, are meant specifically for her uh, most devout followers. I don't think, unless Ms. Rai, you have any questions. Uh, that we will trouble you any longer and let you get back to your evening. Oh, no, darling. I thank you again so much for answering our questions and uh, for your help in attaining this information. And uh, I hope uh, that this is not uh, the last time that I am able to visit the temple. Um, might you uh, point me to is there a room of prayer or anything here where I might uh, take a moment to speak to the knowing mistress about this issue and, and uh, ask for her assistance? Well, certainly. A small meditation chamber is just this way. And she guides you out of the courtyard and down a small side passageway to a fairly simple, um, hexagonally shaped room. There are a couple of cushions. There is some paper and ink. Um, there is one other individual in there, um, a, a young adult uh, human female who is already uh, sort of meditating and, and uh, practicing her, her prayers or her religion um, in this space. I'm going to take a spot in the back while Katie's towards doing um, what he's going to do and just pull out my spell book and one of the sheets of paper and just start start transcribing. Okay. And so she just, she brings me in and leaves me here in this, this meditation room and there's one other person you said? One other person. Okay. Who sort of opens an eye, sees you, and then goes back to her meditation. Okay. Um, I will uh, take a seat or a cushion or whatever is, is around and uh, kind of facing facing a, a wall um, 
I'll take out my symbol of Iun. Um, and holding it, uh, I'll just say, I'm not very used to this and not being uh, per se one of your worshippers. Um, but uh, it is it is I Kesator Veritas, a descendant of Genesis Veritas, an angel in your service. And I am seeking your help because my sister is in trouble. And I believe that she and I are the last remaining in my family who are true seekers of knowledge and in accordance with your values. And I believe that the rest of my family has gone astray in the seeking of power and comfort. And if there is any way that you can guide me in finding her and possibly restoring my family to a place worthy of your service, I would be most grateful. Make a religion check. <laughs> I'm not good at those. <laughs> okay, it's, it's positive though, it's positive. Actually, I think when I leveled up, everything's positive despite, despite my negative strength. Come on. Nine. Nine. Second eight in a row. Okay. It's time for a new dice. I've been switching. As, <laughs> Sorry. As you're praying, and as you're speaking, there is a stillness that comes over the air. You finish speaking, and there's a brief pause, and there's just a moment of perfect silence. It's a little freaky, to be honest, because you hear this, and it's so brief, but you don't hear anything else moving. The hum of activity from the rest of the temple has fallen away. You realize as you're pondering this, the breaths of the other person in the room have fallen away. Your heartbeat is still, your breaths are still a moment of perfect quiet. And then time resumes. The pendant that you hold in your hand. You can't tell if anything has shifted or changed about it, but there seems to be some, some quality you can't put your finger on. Okay. It's slightly, you don't know. You think it might be different? You can't, you can't explain why. Physically, it looks the same. Nothing has changed. Okay. But you get the sense. But it might just be wishful thinking. Okay. Okay, uh, I will get up and go over to Rai and say, uh, I believe that uh, I have caused us to tarry here long enough. We should probably make our way to the tavern and meet up with everyone. Rai, on your end of this, <laughs> as the as Kesator left for the meditation chamber, you're sitting there. And you'd think it would only take him just a couple of minutes, but it is close to an hour later that he actually comes out of the room. Oh, I got good scribing done then. Cool. You do. Um, yeah, just about an hour's worth. Okay, perfect. Um, sounds good. I'll, I'll snap my book closed and cork my ink up and be like, hey, well done, let's go. I haven't had anything from the voice, so I do hope everything is well, considering what you told me. As do I. There were some individuals that showed up at the end, I forgot to mention, that they that seemed to be on our side, perhaps, and I believe were even beckoning to them uh, as they scampered off. 
I didn't know which way they went though, and uh, I decided to head, as I said, to the the Temple of Ayun and ran into you. So I I don't know who the individuals could be. Possibly a connection to Halbert in his past. I'm not entirely certain. Well, I have no way of contacting them. So I say we just head to the Tempest Shadow, and if we find them, we find them. That sounds like an excellent plan to me. Has an, has an hour passed yet, Lauren? Oh yeah, y'all have gotten your um, short rest. Alright, after the short rest, I'm gonna Yay. sending them. Alright, are y'all using any of your hit die over the short rest? <laughs> yeah. <I did. laughs> okay, make sure you go ahead and mark those off. Um, so, hour has passed. Just about for each of y'all. So we're syncing up the timelines at this point. Um, short rest for y'all. Case of Tours meditation and rice scribing. Val, you said you're using sending? Yes, I'm going to sending. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, where is my sending? There's my sending. I cast sending to. Kiss a tour because he's the one I'm most worried about. Not that I'm not worried about Ride, but she's a wizard. <laughs> she's not worried kids. about Ride, so she doesn't think anything of it. Um, before uh, before I use sending, I'm gonna put my head through the hole. I'll do the little a little box. Mm-hmm. Put my head through the hole. Um, we have two companions, whoever I see first, I don't care who it is. We have two companions that need to find their way here. How the hell do I get them here? Let's just head off to where we're supposed to meet with them. Well, do we want to leave before we discuss? We don't have plans at the moment. We have prices on our head. We do have prices on our head. We have information we need to gather. So I feel that safety would be better than out in the open at the moment. Disguises. We can get you nearly anywhere in the city. Almost unseen, if you wish. Um, that would be helpful. Tempest Shadow? I think Tempest Shadow is where we were headed, and I think we need the privacy in some way, shape, or form. Um, can you get us to the... Um, can you get us and the kitty to the Tempest Shadow? Uh, the kitty might make things a little interesting, but as long as he can squeeze through a few small spaces, he should be fine. Option number two. We um, have a discussion with our friend here. Dispose of such, and then send him on his way. And that way we can carry that thing. We really want to do this without... That's an option. I mean... No, I really don't. But Jay does not. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, we definitely need... I would really like to have Ryan Case Tour in on that one. Which, if they come here, then yeah. we can do that. Yeah. I feel like it would be good to get a few answers. Maybe um, especially. I'll, I'll look over Why would we go into the tap person? Let's think, that, like Dorn? Let's think of it like this. Why would we go into the tavern? Do we want to meet that guy and find out some information about the Underlord, right? Mm-hmm. right? How much more information is he going to get that give us that we have not already gotten? Well, he's been there. So, I mean, it's true, but for right now, we at least have an idea. Well, we can always find him later. That's a fair point. Safety first, eh? Safety first, but 
information leads to safety um, as oh well. I I, and I agree, but right, I mean, in the now. So, so right now, um, Brian, I'll look over at Half Orc. Uh, what's, what's her name? Eska. Eska, thank you. Um, is there like, is there a warehouse or something that we can easily get both our friends who are on the street and us too? Uh, just up so the way, yeah. Does that work for you? Yeah. Somewhere secure, somewhere quiet, but somewhere not here. Yeah. No, that'll work. That'll work. All right. Um, if you'd be so kind to um, let us know where we're going, I'll tell our companions how to meet us now. Uh, Torek will lead you. Directions in this part of the city can get a little interesting, shall we say. That's fair. If you're prepared to leave, I can take you now. Um, one moment, and I'll go ahead and cast sending um, to case the tour. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Where you at? <laughs> Your phone, who did? Um, Hear me. Kiss tour. We've met the edge. They're taking us to a nearby warehouse. We'll send someone to get you. Where are you now? Okay. Over. <laughs> I'll respond. Uh, in prison, being tortured. Ah! Just kidding. I'm with Zai. <laughs> We're at the tavern. We'll oh, wait. <laughs> What's the tavern called? The Shadow. Tip of Shadow. We'll wait to the Tip of Shadow. Uh, they're already there. Real time yes, reaction. Can get, you can easily get person. Or not person, kitty there. No, but they can talk to somebody there. Yes, you really want to leave that in their hands. If we have time stuff. when we get there, now that I am You've meeting up with them, I would talk. Two talkers together. He's not wrong. Like, I mean, out of the best situation, we've got the crew to torture, maim, and not be judged by Rai, <laughs> and then we've got the crew that can talk their way out of almost anything and get information. Like. I'm not seeing a lot of bad stuff right now. <laughs> we want we want Val there with his negative charisma. Oh, man. I will point out once again <laughs> that every time I've tried this, aside from the fact that it's hilarious when I roll, that we get advantage every time. Um also can I roll for Sully X to get Health over that short rest. I was just yeah, looking at sheet. It. Thank you. Um, <laughs> he needs okay. it. So are we? Are we going to let them handle the bard themselves? Or are we going to go and bring them to us? They're safe right now. I'd say. Are they? I mean, why? Not. Because nobody knows who she is. And she could talk her way for case tour out of anything, so... Except an arrow in your back. Well, she wasn't there to talk the arrow out of my back, so that's not very fair to say right now. I just had this you don't know of the arrow coming and her just being like, Stop! You stop <laughs> Are you sure you want to hit right there, darling? Right I think a little bit nice. over to the left would be a little bit better. <laughs> don't you think, of course. Can I poke you down on that hit attack? Yes, oh, of course. I think maybe if you were to roll five and less, it would be better. Oh, yes, 100%. Assuming that was meant blood. for you. As far as we know, that could have been meant for somebody standing on the street, and they just now won their attack roll, and you got the bad end of that deal. Actually, that would be an instinctive charm. So yes, I can do that. 
Oh man. And I'm still I'm still holding to Kesator and like backing her up with Stop in the Name of Love or something of that. <laughs> Whatever song works. Stop. It's hammer time. And then Dora comes in with the hammer. What's up? Um all right. I'll let them know that they're on their own for the bot and um we'll hammer. question our chapter. Oh, this is going to go well. All right, I'll use one more sending. My last third level spot. Because, I mean, we're still sending someone to go get them, but until that time. Just have them, um, yeah. if he's if he's there, they could yep. communicate, do what they do best and stuff. Mm. All right, so using another sending spell. First off, you're an ass. Second off, while our friend is coming to meet you, um, if you see the bod, feel free to get what info you can. Over. Uh, do I... Do we know? I, I'm sure I know the bard's name, despite. Biskin. 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 That's right. Okay. Uh, you're not wrong. Sounds good. We'll get information if we find him and wait for the escort. It's going to be great Over when get there and he's not there. <laughs> um, when last we saw Rive, was she still wearing her elf charm? Yes. Okay, just make sure. I'll, uh... Honestly, you probably, probably haven't seen her as a tiefling a lot, because she just doesn't feel comfortable doing that on this world. Okay, that's right. All right, um... Turns out, so, um, two of our friends are at the Tempest Shadow. Okay. <laughs> um, one looks like a uh, ruggedly handsome minstrel with a very loud crossbow. And he looks like he has a loud crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in case you shoot it, they, they go, oh, that's obviously him. Yep. Don't shoot the one with the loud cross. It's enchanted and can sing. It's like a Disney movie. Dude, that would be hilarious. It's actually with the thunder. When I shoot it, it just goes, oh! <laughs> Very nice. I love it. Like the, uh, um, the, the other one you just can't miss, darling. She'll just let like you know there. wherever she is. Like It'll Steve be all right. I believe she's elvish, kind of, possibly, maybe, sort of. Um, that's up for debate, and she will debate you if she has the opportunity to. But she's not too bad, and I do enjoy her company for the most part until she tries to make me pay for everything which she should pay for instead, because she's loaded. So just look for that person, and you should be pretty good at finding lots of companions. She's also doing really well with how... us. <laughs> I'm going to point at Albert and be like, that. <laughs> Very well. At the Tempest Shadow, you said? Yes. Yes. Um, Eska, might I ask if you have a few friends who could help us out with um, a potential little problem? Potentially a deadly problem as well. How... I happen to know of an assassin who needs to be assassinated. That's... Well, we I haven't know. had much success tracking down the group that attacked you earlier, if that's, that's okay. what you're I speaking of. track one of them down right now. She sort just of gives you an eye. Just don't, don't ask about things that aren't important in the moment except for life and death. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, I'll have the ability to bring the person who might be responsible, and I think it would be very beneficial to find out, potentially for both of us, about this uh, alabaster ruin. 
perhaps. I mean, well, all information is always going to be good. I can promise you that. Well, if not good, then useful. That's our reason for needing the warehouse someplace nearby that's secure. Yeah. You wish to go there now? Yeah, I think it might be for the best. It might be good. Very well. Um, she motions for some of the others to accompany her. Says, I will take you myself. And three of the other figures, um, one of the halflings and two of the humans in the room, uh, come over with her. And Eska leads you out through the little crawl space and just up the way through a fairly twisty turny, uh, narrow streets, um, a couple dirt paths between various buildings to the side door of a warehouse. Um, this is currently unoccupied. It should be plenty of space. And people aren't going to comment on terribly loud noises if that is in fact required. Perfect. Could you all potentially secure the doors? Certainly. Uh, she mm -hmm. gestures for the three to go around to uh, the other side of the buildings. Do we want to have Nightbane assist in that guardian? Mm. Or should we have Nightbane standing right behind him? Uh, that's exactly what I was thinking. I like this idea. Um, do you have the ability to um, keep people from running away? Are we about to interrogate it's... the one dude? We're discussing um, a very civil conversation. Fair enough. Let's be honest, if we try and pull this without Wesley here, Johnny and I are going to have to listen to it for like the next six months. <laughs> I mean, Wesley said that I could go ahead and interrogate this dude. Oh, yeah, Garrett just wants to make much. sure we're doing what we're doing because hearing things is hard. Yeah, uh, we're, we're dialoguing about... Um, asking some very polite, kind, straightforward questions <laughs> in a very <laughs> peaceful, sarcasm. unassuming manner. Yeah. As Val is sharpening his knife. 68 points of frickin' damage. 68. You <laughs> <laughs> can figure out what caliber bow he has. Brian, he's got a super bow. Um, yes, it's not guaranteed to work, but I do have that. I also have, sorry, I got hits in the head and my list of stars. I don't want to say it out loud, but I'm concerned. Did you say you're concerned? Yeah, I'm, don't worry about it. Now I'm very worried. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got, Don't I've got the ability to hold people. Fine. I've got the ability to force them to tell the truth when they speak. Um, I've got the ability to make them our friend. Because I think I have that ability there. I do not have that ability. Oh, no, I do have that ability left. I'll I'll do that one once. Don't entirely know what all Sullyx has because I didn't get all of his information. The bum. The bum. So, so just to be clear real quick, we're in like a warehouse that's unused, abandoned. Y'all have been led to an unused warehouse. Uh, yeah. The inside is large and spacious, but yeah. dark <laughs> and fairly poorly constructed. It's it's kind yeah. of shoddy craftsmanship. Um okay, just out of curiosity, how tall is this warehouse? Uh, well, it's probably warehouse, 25, 30 feet tall. I'm going to look up and see if I see anyone in the rafters or above us. Uh, make a perception check. Batman. Uh, perception. 13 plus 8. 21. 21. 21. Nice. Uh, you don't see anyone. Okay. That doesn't make me happy, actually. 
<laughs> that would be awesome, a warehouse battle. Run away now, biatch! <laughs> mm. um, what's the layout? It is a, a fairly large rectangular floor space. There is a, a sort of office space that is a sort of second floor. Um, it looks like it's been prepared, but not actually occupied. So there are stairs going up to it, um, an enclosed room off to the side, but um, there's no furnishings, there's no workstation, nothing really set up inside. It's unoccupied at the moment. Um, okay. You can see the sort of scuff marks and old wear on the floor where uh, things have been, but you can't tell what it was. You can't really see any particular um, defining characteristics that would that, mark it for one use or another. That second floor office, is that like a room in and of itself, or is that just like a second story, like open platform situation? Uh, no, it's enclosed. Maybe we go... That's yeah. fuzzy because it looks cool. like your background. It looks like my background. Your background, background. You've got your Blurred. background blurred. I'm working on that. It's just the weirdest thing. Hey! Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. Something like that? Ish, yeah. Ish enough. Ish enough. Not much to really, like, hide behind. Well, he thinks the smaller room because in clothes, less that our friends can just leave the conversation. How many ways in and out? Yeah. Uh, I'm about to show you. Just a moment. <sighs> Forgive my own rough sketch. Can you all, I don't know if you can actually see that. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's two doors, there's stairs, and a little bitty corner room. F yeah. second. Quiet. Cool. <laughs> Screenshot of a screenshot of a screenshot. Are, are there... Yep. Does the ceiling look garbagey or the walls look garbagey where there's holes where a person could leave, perhaps? Um, the ceiling is kind of patchy. The, the rafters are holding it up. The roof itself is um, rusted or rotted or it's, it's not in very great condition. Um, the walls themselves look to have been reinforced as though to keep vagrants out for one I, whoever owns it most recently doesn't really want squatters in there um, but it doesn't look like it's been well maintained so potentially keeping a vagrant in maybe kind of decent odds great <laughs> well cool. what, do you, what do you guys want to do because I think I'm going to go stand in one of those doors and play bouncer. I'm hoping to have the doors locked from the outside. Because I really prefer not to have them just um, run up on me. Couldn't hear a word of it. No. Um, I'd like to go ahead and have the doors locked so he doesn't just run away, but have them locked from the outside. Can we do that? Well, you have a, a party member who's good with lockpicks. He can deal with the locks himself, or you have people on the outside who can mm -hmm. perhaps assist. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, is if they're on the outside, you kind of have to uh, know a password or a special knock to get out. So we'll use the same uh, entry lock or knock to be the, the code to get out, if you don't mind. Can you convey this to Eska? Mm-hmm. Uh, certainly, that can be arranged. How's her name spelled, by the way? E-S-K-A. Like Eskimo. Sure. Whatever helps you remember it. That's your twin brother. And you got Escalary and Eska Curly. Your mother is Inuit. Sure. All right, so the doors are set up with the way that you had wanted them. 
Happy day doll. Um, cool. I'm really kind of wanting cell eggs here, but all right, that's fine. It's all fine. Everything's but fine. But he is here. In spirit, yes. I just don't know what all he has and how hard he can hit, and I don't trust this guy. I really, Lauren did a good job about making me not trust him <laughs> at all. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, we can. Hold so off. your preparations are made to mm -hmm. the extent we, that you we, have described so far. Is there anything else you want to do before you release him? If we take, uh, if we take uh, some time to uh, rest for a long period of time, I have all my spell slots back. Kind of just saying. Defeats the entire purpose. I'm also going to throw out, we can always switch over to. Yeah, that's what exactly I was about to switch out to. Exactly where I'm fixing to head out to. I just yeah. wanted to get to the point if they were going to release No, on. I was going to. If ask... there was anything else that I wanted to set up. Yeah, we're good. All right. So as y'all prepare to release him, we will go ahead and jump on over to Rai and Kiz Tor. Um, as, oh, as we were walking, I was going to lean over to Kezator and say, uh, you know, darling, the, the main bond there strikes me as something very interesting, and I don't want to pry. Uh, so if this is business you want to leave to yourself, please do let me know. But I may possibly have someone who could give a little bit more information. I don't know how useful it would be, but... I would be very intrigued at any information. That we can glean. Uh, Bondera is. Are you aware that I uh, took a book from the library here? I was a little preoccupied, Alex. I can't remember what I if I show. I guess we hadn't had time because we were walking and you weren't with us. And um, I took a book from the library. Um, just one, Dolly. Just one. Uh, <laughs> um. It was, uh, it was referred to as the Veritas Folio. It was, well, I don't know who it was written by. There was a note in the front of it from my father, who I'm not exactly on speaking terms with. Um, the note from Veritas is the one that said that it was to be only to be given to the one whom it was intended for or whatever. Essentially, yeah. Okay, or that that's was what the, the... Um, that was what Lannis the message that Lanneth had been right. told. And something in the book I thought said it, either either in the front of the book or the, the note from Selator. What did the note from Selator say? I don't have that pulled open. I will get so that, that was, for you this week. That was just the, okay. That may have just been talking, because was it something was also talking about, you know, that there were the, the four-part binding spell, but I thought that was actually as I was looking over the book, not in the actual letter. Regardless, uh, um, um... I don't even remember why I was asking that, but I had this book, there was a note in the front from my father, I don't know if this book was intended to fall into my hands or not, it's curious that it is here because I am not from this world, um, But it talks, it speaks of a, of a binding spell that is in four parts. And I believe, well, from it I believed that they were holding my sister somewhere, my younger sister. Um, the only one in my family that I really still, well, spoke with until she went missing. Um, That was about 13 years ago. Um, there was another book in the library that simply had the notation, know your question before you ask it, know your question before you, something like that. And upon asking where my sister was, the book seemed to animate and tell me uh, that she was on Vondera. Uh, and it gave a, a, little, a few more specifics, but uh, I'm not familiar with where Vondera is, and it sounds like it is a place on another world. 
and being not familiar with it, I don't think necessarily that it's on the world I'm from, although it's not to say that I know every every part of the world that I am from. So I don't I don't know anything else about the place, and I don't know how to get there without a sanctum, uh, or even with a sanctum, since I'm not certain what world it's on. So I'm trying to find out where Vondera is, because apparently, uh, the second question I asked, it said that... I'm sorry, my sister's not on Vondera, if I said that. I believe the first part of the key to unlocking the binding spell is on Vondera. The key is in four parts. My sister is in an extraplanar dimension held by this binding spell. Presumably set there by my family, though I'm not entirely sure. Very interesting, darling. Uh, let me send a quick message, and then I may have a bit of an explanation about, based on this story about Kolia, about where Vondera is. So one moment. And I'll pull the stone out and send a message to Steady. Um, Steady, darling, if you can take a moment, I need any information you may have on Vondera, Veritas, or Kolia. Uh, if you can reply in a message, wonderful. But if not, just uh, t borrow the journal from Alice and write down your response. I've got a, a friend who needs a little bit of information, please. Um, pretty quickly back, you get a message from Steady. Uh, dearest Rai, uh, Voldera is one of the assignments I took last year. I can get you further information via the journal with Oust. Uh, Veritas and Kolia escape me at the moment. More research will be done. Uh, yes, my cousin is on it. He never fails. His name is Steady, after all. Um, now, Lauren, just to make sure I understand this correctly, so we're talking about it is the same world that they're on, it's just an alternate version of it? Um, no. Valdera is a different world. Okay, it's a completely different world. Yes. The, the... The missions that the Sanctums take um, lead you to these different worlds. That's why um, it's not fully understood by people who aren't members of the Sanctum. This is a sort of phenomenon you have encountered before in your travels. The, a lot of people who don't know about Sanctums but who have sort of encountered these, these other worlds have various multiverse theories of parallel dimensions and alternate universes and um, sort of the idea of uh, changes in history spawned a variety of different uh, outcomes. That's why worlds can look so different from each other. Um, so you'll find legends and myth of this sort of phenomenon across the worlds that you travel to and it's usually just people not understanding the these sort of worlds that the Sanctums connect. Okay. Um, trying to figure out how she would explain this. Community, I'll use community. Um, so I'll pull out a coin and um, I'll be like, so darling, if you think about this coin, I flip it, I have two options. It's either going to be heads up or tails up. Um, either one. And depending on which one is up, that means that there are different actions that may take place. This is what Vondera is. It was um, a parallel situation with the world where it has a, a, a break somewhere in the history. And it went on its own path that differs from this one. And it's uncommon. Uh, from my knowledge and understanding for people to be able to arrive at these because that's primarily what sanctums do is they uh, firm up, they shore up um, the worlds themselves that they interact with. And so this is, um, it happens, but it is not something that people frequently attend to or are around, especially if there's a firm sanctum near them. Uh, but it is something that you can travel to. 
Um, and my cousin actually went to Vondera itself, so I'm hoping he'll be able to provide us a little bit more information to understand it. So he will be writing to me soon, hopefully with more. And your cousin is at the library? Yes, darling. So <clears throat> the library still has a connection, <coughs> excuse me, to this world? Oh, yes. <laughs> and, yes, and darling. Bondair itself is a is a world, not not a place on a world. Correct. It's own its own world. Side quest. This whole thing is a side quest. Um, <laughs> I've got a four part side quest. Um, although in case stores, mine's the main quest. Uh, my side quest. That's the joy of D and D. Yeah. <laughs> Um, completionist. It's <laughs> interesting. So you, you yourself have not been to Vondera? No, I have not. I do remember Steady talking about it a little bit. He's a research librarian, but occasionally he goes places just to get a little bit more information. Uh, so I have some knowledge from him, but like I said, he should be contacting me with a bit more information shortly. Interesting. Well, I will be anxious to await and see what he says, and is it possible to communicate with him after that if I have more questions? Uh, well, I am here. There most definitely is that opportunity. I can connect Perfect. with him. Um, I don't know how we will do this once I move on, but for the moment, you have that connection. And I, would, I would be very interested in establishing a means of communication with him before you leave, if that were at all possible. This is a matter of utmost importance to me. Family is very important, darling. I understand that deeply. Uh, so I don't know how we will be able to set that up, but if we can, I would be happy to do so. Excellent. Don't tell the others, but you're one of my favorites. Well, thank you, Miss Rye. I'm growing rather fond of you myself. It will be a sad day when you leave us. I assume that we've reached the Tempest Shadow. <laughs> uh, very briefly. A uh, short time later, you do manage to reach the Tempest Shadow, and it is an extravagantly decorated building with uh, blue and black banners uh, of various shades, sort of the, the um, sort of like beetle shell, the opalescent uh, shining fabric sort of drawing the eye and inviting you in. Um, it's a little bit interesting, the effect it gives is almost like what you see in um like crows or ravens uh their their feathers in the darkness the shine that you get on that and so um you come in and it is well lit it is warm and it is welcoming and it is fairly crowded for a what's essentially a weekday evening <laughs> Um, the people that you see in here are fairly well-dressed, uh, well-to-do. There is a lot of talk and drinking. There is food that is around. You get the sense that it's not just a bar, that they do provide fairly high-quality meals here also. <coughs> and there is music playing. Uh, there are a number of booths that line the walls and tables that are set in the main floor, and there is an area that has been cleared for dancing. Um, the fireplace is against the back wall. Um, you get the sense that it's uh, the same sort of fireplace that the kitchen also works off of. Um, there is a door leading into back rooms. You get the kitchen or some other office type area off to the right, and there's a staircase that leads both up and down over to the left, and it is much more uh, grandiose and inviting, obviously leading to more um, public areas. Okay. So just brief recap, dance floor, band, tables, kind of bar area, office, stairs. Yep. Sweet. Um, I guess... Shall we approach the bar and see if anyone can point us to Mr. Fiskin? Yeah, I was going to ask, is this the kind of place where you just walk in and take a table, or is this, they've got someone who's actually 
feeding people? Um, there are a number of uh, staff who are dressed in the same sort of fabric that the banners are, this opalescent blue and black, who are uh, uh, waiting tables, essentially. Um, and as they notice that you are sort of standing in the doorway looking around, um, one of them comes over to you. Uh, it's a fairly young half-elf, uh, hair pulled back, uh, in this, this very well-put-together uh, outfit, uh, like the others. Uh, please do, do come in. You may be seated at the bar or make a tape, uh, take a table for yourself, as it pleases your fancy. Uh, is there anything I can get you while you are uh, finding a seat? Any, any drink or meal I can start preparing for you? Oh, darling, uh, my fiancé and I were visiting for a very short period of time, and we heard about this marvelous singer by the name... Do you remember what his name was, darling? Oh, yes, I believe it was, uh, a Fiskin, if I recall. Yes, and so we were hoping, we were told that he might be through, and so we were hoping to, to see him. So, uh, will he be at this stage, or is there another place we should go? Uh, he is here tonight. Unfortunately, he's not performing tonight. Oh, uh, you see this sort of tension comes over her form, um, and her eyes sort of dart up to the bar and then back to you. <laughs> That's very unfortunate. Well, darling, we've made it all this way over here, so perhaps, even though we're not going to be able to actually see him perform, maybe we can just get dinner. Was that to me? Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, darling, whatever you would like. Anything for you. Oh, thank you very much, darling. Uh, we'll head to the bar. You have been lovely, thank you. The darling twins. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. By all means, I'll go ahead and get some of those meals started for you. Do you prefer, um, well, we have some fish fresh caught from the oasis. It's a little bit pricey, you understand. Uh, we do have a little bit of a waterfowl. It's in season this time of year. It's very well prepared, if I do say so myself. Um, the chef also does marvelous blood sausage. So do you have a preference? I think I'll do the fish. What do you think, darling? Yeah, I think I'll join you. The fish sounds delightful. Uh, very well, I'll go ahead and get that prepared for you and be right out. Please feel free to have a seat. We'll yeah. go sit down. So she goes and heads back towards the kitchen to start getting that order put in. Um, I will. You'll head to the bar. It is not crowded, but there you, you can find seats pretty pretty easily. There are uh, about four other people sitting at the bar. Um, a human man with dark hair, a half-elf with uh, shockingly white hair, lines on his face, um, a excuse me, a human woman who's middle-aged, and then a uh, halfling woman who is a uh, not quite middle, fully adult, but not quite middle-aged. These are the people sitting at the bar? Those are the people sitting at the bar. Um, the <laughs> women are chatting to each other. The men are drinking solo. And the white-haired half-elf looks especially deep in their cups. In reference to where everyone, are we kind of in the middle of this group? Are we to one side? Um, the... Women are against the wall, and the men are sort of split up, so you're between the two. Okay. Does it look like it would be out of place for a couple to sit at the bar, or most couples at the tables, and it seems like more kind of just like, like the group of guys and girls, like friends are sitting at the, the bar just having fun? Um, from what you can see, it's not necessarily out of place. Um, there are still a number of other empty seats available at the bar and at the a couple of the booths and tables. It's not packed, but it is busy. Okay. If it's not out of place, I guess we'll take a seat at the bar. So we can easier to talk to the barman that way. Okay. I'll say a little bit louder than necessary, but making it look like I'm just trying to be heard over the noise. Darling, it is so disappointing we're not going to get to see Fiskin. I was so hoping to see him. I know, I know. It would have been so, so nice to hear. I, 
everything we heard of him was so positive, but perhaps... Perhaps we can stay in town for a little and, and hear him another time. Oh, do you think we could do that? I'm so concerned because I know we had that business we were going to, but if you're willing to wait a little bit, I would be so happy. Absolutely. Nothing is too good for my Riley <laughs> Uh As y'all are having this conversation, the uh, white-haired half-elf sort of gets it. You get their attention. And they they sort of look up and look over at you, have a big grin, and they'll just go back to their drink. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> um, does anyone else seem to do anything when we bring up this skin? Um, there are a couple glances at just how loud you're being, but nothing. Actually, make an insight check. Really. Roll good. Done can so poorly. Can I join in that? Changes. Yeah, go ahead, Gaze Store. Okay, insight. Insight. Right. A six. Okay. Oh, what dice did you roll? <laughs> it's a different one, too! Nineteen. Nineteen. Thank God. Kazator <laughs> with the save. Yeah. I got a good roll. Uh, Kazator, the barman, actually. The. Uh, a sort of older human male, uh, hair pulled back away from his face, beard well trimmed. Um, he sort of, he doesn't change what he's doing, but you notice his eyes sort of glance over at the half elf and then back to what he's doing. Remains fairly straight to face, doesn't, doesn't say anything, doesn't do anything, but just, you, you saw the glance. Okay. Um, I will motion to the barman to come over and uh, just ask him, uh, my good man, my uh, fair lady and I are, are having a fish this evening. What would you recommend to pair? Hey, we've got a nice white wine that'll go well with that, or if your lady prefers something a little softer, a good cider crop this year came in very nice. Compliments the fish quite well. Most intriguing. Uh, if you stay for dessert, we have a nice liquor. Um, this one's a an odd grain-based one we had imported. Complements the sweetness of our cream dessert very nicely. The custard and of the the sweetness of the custard complements the tartness of the liquor quite well, if I do say so myself. We find it to be very popular. Very interesting. Love. What would you like for this evening? And, uh, you know, since I'm not able to indulge myself with, with some mech I was hoping, I think maybe we'll just indulge with the cider and maybe some dessert. Excellent. If we can have two rounds of cider and hold the dessert until we're finished with our fish. Absolutely. It'll be right up. Um, within two minutes, y'all have each got your cup of cider, and a short time after that, uh, the fish is brought out. Uh, plated very elegantly. It's gonna be expensive. <laughs> <laughs> um, whenever the bartender comes out with this cider, I'm gonna be like, "Do you do you know? Because we went out to see to see Fiskin, and we have just heard that he's not playing. Do you know whenever he might be playing in town? We we have business that's taking us elsewhere. So I just want to find out if it's." And I'll look over at the case door. Not too much trouble. We were thinking about possibly staying for a little bit longer. Fiskin. Uh, who can say? I, I'm not in touch with the entertainment schedule, you understand. The, um... You might try back. Probably not tomorrow. Maybe day after, if your travel plans permit. Oh, yeah. I do wish we had a thumb of him. Do you... I said maybe he's here. Would we be able to inquire with him? At this point, you see, it's it's a fairly obvious <laughs> eyes glance over and then right back to you, and you hear a sort of not a not a snort necessarily, um, but a a a sound of derision. 
but also good humor. It's not exceptionally subtle, and you're both perceptive enough to be able to pick it up. This is the elf this of white hair. The, the white haired half elf. Yes. Just a side note. I just, how old does Rise T or uh, Elf form? Like, how old does she look? Uh, late twenties, early thirties. I've been magically aged by that graveyard encounter. I'm almost 70. <laughs> Just FYI. Just want to throw yep. that out there. I love it. You're, you're a human. So. Uh, well aged. With a significantly younger partner as the... Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, it's it's curious. Hmm. I just realized that aesthetic was going on, so... Yep. Sweet. Yep. It's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Does the bartender say anything in response? Um, to your your disappointment, uh, or that he's Fiskin's <laughs> available. Right. Uh, he, he is uh, he, he not available at the moment. I don't believe Fiskin is available right now. Uh, I can. Certainly, if you'd like to leave a note, make sure Fiskin gets it. Some message, perhaps. And there's a very studious ignoring the uh, the half elf to the side now. Uh, at this at this point, the um, the awkward has sort of built because. Y'all have a decent guess, and the bartender very well knows, and the half-elf has just been enjoying this whole situation. He's like, ah, it's fine, it's fine, and you see a very drunk half-elf sort of pick himself up. Haran, it's fine. Well, let, let him beat me. Let him come on over. Come on. And just waves you over. Well, we're we're all friends here. Fiskin. Fiskin Leva. Nice to meet you. A uh -huh. pleasure. And he tries to bow and halfway loses his balance in the seat. I like him already. Um, I'll lean into Kate's for a little bit more and, and put on it a little bit of an affect. Oh, you're the Fiskin. Oh, darling. Wonderful. I believe we uh, should we should we move to to sit with him. Yeah, perhaps uh, we can take a, a booth. Uh, we would we would love to speak with you a little bit. We were hoping to see you. Um, maybe we can take it to a booth. Yes, Mr. Fiskin, please join us. Let us buy you another drink. Ah, uh, I knew I liked you. I knew I liked you. Drinks, yes. Uh, Booth, Booth, and he sort of tries to stagger up, loses his balance, and that one, that, that one, right there, that Booth, and Excellent. he starts Easy trying boy. to make his way clumsily through the bar over to the Booth. I'm going to lean into the, the bartender and say, perhaps something a little watered down for Mr. Fiskin. Oh, watered down, darling, I was going to say tomato juice, for sure. Perhaps some tomato juice for Mr. Fiskin. I think he'll notice the difference in that. I think he's drunk enough not to notice much else. Darling, it's called a Bloody Mary, and it should be fine. Very well. Bloody Mary. I'm not familiar with this, is it? It's Stop something it. we've got down south, darling. It Mostly tomato juice. Just uh, get a cup ready, and I will uh, endeavor to tell him about the wonders of this southern delicacy. I, uh... Half off drinks for you if you give me the recipe. Of course, darling. And so uh, you explain to him the wonders of a Bloody Mary, and fairly quickly, he's got a very light one, like very light on the alcohol, prepared for you to take over to Fiskin, who is lounging in the booth, just having a good old time. Um, the um, the bartender, Haran, 
does ask if you would like dessert to be sent that way also. That would be wonderful, yes. By all means, I'll have it brought right over. Um, so you head on over to Fiskin, and a short time later, two uh, sort of cups of custard with uh, fresh fruit decorating it. Uh, I say decorating. It's like a garnish, essentially. There's, It's not really substantial. Um, are brought over also, and you have a little bit more privacy with Fiskin in the booth. Mr. Fiskin, we've heard a tale uh, from here to Grimhold about your skill with an instrument. Yes. Tell me, is it true? Um, a musical instrument, darling. You get this wide grin on his face. It's true. I'm the best. Always the best. Is, that is amazing. Uh, did you, by chance, uh, go through the, the apprenticeship trials there in Grimhold before landing here, or is it just uh, a natural gifting you were blessed with? No. Traveled the world. All the way. All the, all, all, all the way to Dragon Throne. That's see, that's um, most impressive. Very fabulous. Can you, what, what are some of the most fantastical things you have done on your journeys? I, we're, we're only going to be in town for a little bit. Is there anything interesting around here you could tell us about? Hoi, friend. Get, get, get in the heights. The heights are the, the height of luxury. And he starts laughing to himself at his own witty pun in his mind. So, oh, yes, very good, very good. The, the highest, so the highest, the the the, the best. Just mm, get get in there. That's and that's you know that's where they have all the real decision making anyway. And and they, I go, I perform in the heights, and they listen to me, and they they inform my art. And, and and it's the best. It's gonna push the, the Bloody Mary a little bit closer to him. He takes it and he, he takes a sip and starts and just gives you a look and then just drains it. Sets the empty cup back down on the table. Um there they're the decision makers, you know, the the heights and and my art, the decisions I get to inform with my my art makes a difference. The stories I tell, I change people's minds. What are some of your favorite stories to tell? Mm, stories of Well, uh, so this one time, <laughs> <laughs> last summer. So he starts going on, and I'm not I'm not going to ramble the whole thing yeah, for yeah. you, but he starts yeah. going on and he starts telling about this sort of uh, this sort of country court that he was invited to summer with uh, a little ways more up north. Um. And the um, oh so lovely maidens that he got to meet and dance with, and, and the influence that he had and the gifts that uh, he was given, and the um, the real decision makers, you know, the people who are in power, and they came back from the summer court, and he was invited to come and to to winter at Grimhold, and. Um, or not Grimhold, excuse me, at White Brand, and to um, to tutor one of these young ladies and to teach her um, the the classical uh, music. And as the... he's doing this, I wave my hands in the somatic components and cast fast forward. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's very particular about the stories that he tells, and he's not making much sense. 
Uh, he's yeah. very proud of the sort of thing he has accomplished. You notice he is very deliberate, even his drunken state. He does not mention anything about the Underlord. Okay. Oh. I will say, we have heard you've encountered many dangers on your travels as well that you have survived. And perhaps a, a story of uh, one of your most impressive feats. Um, he sort of, he sort of side-eyes you a little bit and then starts, you know, explaining, yes, there was this, um, this griffin attack he fought to, he, he helped to fight off and he defended this caravan that he had been traveling with and, um, oh, another time there was a herd of centaurs and there was this conflict and he got to actually lead the negotiations and solve the dispute and, and he goes on and on for a little bit, still... Not mentioning anything. I kind of, as he's going through this and elaborating and just whispered awry, just should we be more direct? Quite possibly. Um, you know, uh, darling, we're, we're going to be heading up north in a little bit. Uh, so. Maybe we can do a few more stories, but we might need to turn in a little bit. Um, you know, we, and I'll stage whisper to Hazator, I know we have a big discussion about trying to make sure the business doesn't go under with that lord. So, at this point, Fiskin is well and truly, like, three sheets to the wind. Very drunk. Um, he's not been doing well on his uh, constitution. Uh, but his perception, apparently, is good enough. He does hear you. And it is enough for him to fall silent. Uh, and just stare at you. Big eyed, little bit of drool coming out of his mouth, catching uh, uh, on some of the the, um, the napkin he's got set up almost as a bib. Um, over this time, one of the things y'all have noticed, actually, no, let's say this. Both of you make me a perception check. Who do I trust? <laughs> Last time. Green. 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 I read his mind. Yes. Not quite, but especially this this sudden stillness that's brought over him as as he hears those words sort of in conjunction. The the lines in his face that had made him appear older at first, the white hair, the way he carries himself, all of it sort of seems to fall away, and you realize he's not nearly as old as he appears at first glance. That some some sort of stress in his life or some trauma has prematurely aged him, and this is this is a glimpse that you get sort of as soon as he freezes. The stillness, um, the not that he's any less drunk, not that he's any less what he was before, but it's this glimpse that you get in that moment. So just a, a stillness. Yeah, and for someone who has been gregarious and in motion right. and all through the course of the evening, it's kind of remarkable how, how quickly the change came over him. And Is he it brushes moment? it away uh, pretty fairly quickly. Like he, he sort of catches himself and then tries to go back and there's a stiltedness now to his movements and, and his speech. Be right back. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I'll take I'll take a very obvious notice of it as she says this, and he reacts and say, "Oh, uh, dear, I believe you may have spoken too loudly, Fiskin. I, I would beseech you not to to mention anything of the Underlord. I know that people around here can be very wary of his existence." I'm going to. Um... Use charm person. Okay. Okay. They need to make a wisdom saving throw. That is a 12. That does not succeed. All right. So he is charmed by you. Who wouldn't be? Thank you, Dolly. Right, is especially charming. <laughs> yes, Dolly. We, um, it's sensitive, and I'm I'm sorry. I I shouldn't have brought it up. I'm very new to this business. I hope we didn't upset you. You. You're one of his agents. You're. I I haven't said it. I haven't said anything. I I won't. Oh I, I I won't. You know I won't. I've I've been. I've kept my deal. I've kept my deal. Give a very wide-eyed look at Kate's tour and then look back at him and be like, Darling, what the hell are you talking about? I'm, I'm, let me get you another Bloody Mary. You seem to be a little, um, a little upset. I'm not sure what you're talking about, my dear. He sort of looks at you. Make a persuasion check. I don't like any of them. Uh, so, it's a natural one. <laughs> oh no! I don't like um, any of them. Um, um, um. Sorry, package delivery. <laughs> Let me look. All different dice. I'm very upset today. It is okay because you have advantage on any ability check to interact socially with the creature while it is charmed by you. So go ahead and roll that with advantage. Uh, that's great. So that's a two, so that's going to put me at ten. <laughs> Did you roll the same die? No, I rolled a different die. You should have rolled the same die. It's all right, Brenda. His insight on you is a nine. That's your dice too. Good. Um, so he he sort of settles. He settles himself down a little bit. Um, The, the mania that has sort of started filling his posture and his gaze starts to abate. Um, was there a, a question specifically that you had asked him? I don't remember. I think it was like if I said something that upset him. Right, right. He'll, let's see. How does he want to do this? Uh, he will... He... He... he, he. He starts to relax against the seat again. Um, don't, don't worry, my sweet. It's, uh, obviously I was, I was mistaken. I was misinformed. Not upset? No, don't, he didn't upset me. It's fine. It's fine. I'll lean into Kate's for like we're a happy couple and say, I know we're dealing with our own problems, but you were talking about a, a deal about it. Like maybe if you can let us know a little bit, we can help you. Make another persuasion check. <laughs> okay. Come on, you guys. Oh, of course. Um, 
Can I do math? You can certainly try. 24? 24. Okay, awesome. There's a... He leans forward over the table. And he starts looking around. I can't... I can't talk about some things about him. You understand. That's that's the deal. That's part of my promise. My gift, I guess. What he gave me. It... You know. You know who. You know. He gave me a... He gave me a book. And it made me better. It made people like me more. My... I guess you'd say my charisma. How I connect with people. I got so much better. My art, my performance, what I can give just so much better. But I can't, I can't tell anybody, I can't tell anybody about him or, or his, his home, his home where he lives, and his collection, and his treasure, all the treasure, so much treasure, is so pretty, it's so pretty, but I can't, I can't tell anybody, I haven't, I haven't, I'm keeping my deal, I, I've kept my deal, I haven't told anybody, not a thing, darling, but, we're not just anybody, we're friends. Uh, what else can't you tell us? Of course you are. I can't, I can't, I can't tell you about him. I can't, his, his home, his, all the caves, the path. I can't, I can't say anything about the path to get to him. That's the deal. Darling, could you maybe just tell us a little bit? Because as I said, we're, we're heading up that direction. So maybe so we can avoid similar ideas if you can just tell us a bit about it oh you you want okay avoid avoid the mountain his mountain he lives under the mountain avoid the mountain don't if you want if you want to avoid him don't go in the cave which cave if, you, if it's he's got a mark on it's really easy to avoid don't don't worry about it just don't go in the and if you do if you accidentally go in the cave don't push the button. No, <laughs> it's rigged. It's shiny. Oh, it's so pretty. Don't touch it. I mean, you don't go into cave, but don't don't press don't press the button. Touch nothing but the lamp. <laughs> what what happens if we press the button, darling? Oh, you'll go to his home. And then and then but it's he changes it. But no, I can't I can't talk about that. That's the deal. I can't talk. I can't talk about the path. Um, but you jump around a lot. But you can't... Not jump. Jump's not the right word. It's more like the... And he sort of leans back. And he goes with his hands. And he's like a... And he tries to clap. But he can't actually like get his hands to connect. And then he splits them apart. And he's like... Like that. That. Yep like that and and it's never the same twice you don't you can you can only go forward you can't go back but i can't i can't tell you that i didn't i didn't tell you that no yeah. certainly not and if you is it possible to go forward in the wrong direction and not be able to get back but be stuck where you can't go forwards no all paths lead to the end. So it doesn't make it that far. <laughs> so some paths are better than the others. Oh, they're all dangerous. But I can't tell you. I can't tell you about about the monsters. He keeps pets. 
I can't tell you about his pets. <laughs> Scary pets. What kind of creatures could live underground, darling? Oh, all, all kinds. But, and he leans in real close. And he starts to whisper. And he's not whispering at all, but he tries. He's like, holding my breath. They bite. <laughs> gotta, you gotta be careful because they bite. Um, and he sort of leans back again, like he told you a big secret, but I will again stage whisper to King's Torp. I think he's talking about bats, darling. Oh, quite right. It must be. <laughs> bats. <laughs> bats. And he just That's... sort of nods and smiles. I, I can't tell you. That's the deal. What kind of creatures can't you tell us? The, the, the pets. The, the bitey, chomp, chomp, chomp pets. <laughs> but they're not bats, you say? That's very strange. I don't understand. <laughs> he's, he's sort of fixated. And he is very, very drunk at this point. Uh, about... Not, not very far at all from just passing out at the table. <laughs> right up. <laughs> If someone w w were to go back and, and fall into this accidentally, what, what would be the, the thing to keep themselves the most safe? Safe. <laughs> and he just starts laughing uproariously, like, safe. Ha! <laughs> That's funny. More safe than they would be otherwise? He, he leans in, and it's a secret. Find a guide. One of one of his guides will take you to him. But it's going to be a test. You got to you prove yourself. Interesting. Pro yeah. pro pro pass, pass the test. And if we have a guide, we'll be safe until we get to him. No. <laughs> but he maybe won't die. Wait, where would you find a guide like that, darling? <laughs> He'll send one to you, if you're interesting enough. <laughs> and he just starts laughing. How do you ominous become interesting enough? Or make that known to the right people? At this point, he's just laughing. And he gets to the point where he's... um. The, the laughing transitions into snorting, transitions into snoring, and he's not really awake anymore. You could take him out back, tie him up, throw water on him, cast lesser restoration, and keep interrogating him. Actually, yeah. darling, I was thinking of... think like Halberd. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> and it might not necessarily be a bad thing to make sure he gets home safely, so... Say that one more time. It might not be a bad thing to make sure he does get home safely. So. Certainly. Do you know where he lives? <laughs> I'm gonna kind of be like, I'm sure we can figure it out, darling. <laughs> the bartender comes over, and he's been providing drinks for y'all. Mm-hmm. I say y'all, more for Fiskin at this point. Um, and he, he comes close enough to, to hear y'all sort of wondering about getting him home safely. And he's like, well, I can put him up in a room for tonight. Let him sober up and go home in the morning. Oh, I would feel terrible about that. He has kept us so well entertained tonight. We will, we will make sure he gets home safely. But thank you very much. He sort of looks at you. So it's like, you have no idea where he lives, do you? No. Out of town, didn't even know what he looked like. No, I think we'll go ahead and put him in a room here tonight. Oh, I... 
Don't you go with Southern hospitality up here? Very well. If you want to pay for the room, I'll not turn it down, but, uh... He's... he's an asset for us, and... A sucker and drunkard though he is, he's sort of a friend. It's so, cool. he's so uh... We'll keep him here tonight, but thank you. So we will submit him to your excellent care. And uh, perhaps, uh, since he seems to be uh, done for the evening, uh, we'll close out our tab and uh, bid you good night. Is the person who's supposed to pick us up there? Um, make a perception check. I don't understand what is happening with my life tonight. Uh, 24. 24. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, as you look around this around the room, you see about two tables farther in, uh, with a very clear view, uh, uh, line of eye shot to your table, just sitting, leaning, watching you fairly overtly, is a halfling female, a halfling woman, who's just been waiting for you to sort of look up and look around. Um. It's going to be like, oh, darling, I didn't think she would make it here in time, but it looks like our friend actually, her travels got finished early and she's here. So uh, she's actually owes us, so you can go ahead and put it on her bar and I'll wave her over. Darling, come over here, please. <laughs> <laughs> make a persuasion check? Or mm, make a deception check. This is going to be deception. How to lose friends and alienate people. Great. 17? Yeah, that's an actual one on his insight. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he at first appears skeptical, but as, as the halfling comes over, you know, curly dark hair pulled back into a low ponytail, uh, he's like, very well then. All right. Uh... And he, he gestures for her to come over uh, with him to the bar. And she, she sort of gives you a glance. What is going on? I give her a really big smile. Uh -huh. She... It's another natural one. <laughs> Two in a row. The dice, uh, remember. Your dice, friend, though. <laughs> they like you. Uh, um, she goes with them. And he he takes her up to the uh, the cash register area, per se, um, and, and settles the tab. And she looks over his her shoulder to sort of glare at you, <laughs> but pays up. I will... Gesture for Kate to to get out of the booth ahead of me and start walking out the door. All right, as y'all head out into the street fairly quickly, uh, she comes with you. And she says, I don't know if I hate your guts or if we're going to be best friends. <laughs> well, that is where we'll go ahead and we'll leave it for the session. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yay! Fun times, guys. And getting some information. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of we information. still didn't die. We Yay. got Casalore. Casalore? Oh my god. <laughs> the best I could come up with. That's, that's good. That's good. I approve. Oh. Wow. Oh, fun times, guys. Well, that was that was a lot. Uh, <laughs> that was a lot. It was really good to, to, to see y'all and play with y'all. Mm -hmm. Things have been crazy, and I really appreciate having this time each week with y'all. Um, for those of you who tuned in to join us, thank y'all for joining us. Um, I hope that you tune back in next week as the adventure continues. Um, like I said, Instagram is almost 100 followers, and that's very exciting. Because we're such a small group of geeks. I mean, <laughs> seriously. Um, so if y'all find it, you know, spread the word, 
check us out. Um, yeah, no. So you all have an excellent week. Thank you for tuning in, and we will catch you on our next adventure. Bye. Mm -hmm.